of America with your host, Michael and Jacob. Good evening, afternoon, morning, manana, whenever you're watching this. How you doing? Welcome into... Oh, shit. Episode 170. What a great intro for episode 170. How's everybody doing? Happy Thursday. We are almost through the week, as you well know. The weekend's fast approaching. And what's going on this weekend? Oh, we just got a little taste of Fulham. Actually, we're going to Craven Cottage, so we're giving them a taste. And you know what Fulham has? Adama Traore. So mark my words, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, watch your seats. Watch the pitch. Things might get slippery very quick, is all I'm going to say. But we better hope he doesn't start. He's been more of a super sub for Fulham thus far. But we're not here to talk about Adama Traore. Obviously, as you can see, there is a question in the poll, in the title, and in my heart. Are, are, are is not, are we, are, that, that's not how I started the question. Is Son Hung Min world class or is he not? Look, it's been something that I've seen a lot of opinions on. And frankly, um, I'm going to tell you all right now. I think he is world class. I don't think it just become world class. I think he's been world class. You look at where this man has come from to where he is now. Uh, you look at the things he's been able to do over the course of his career and the things he's still doing. What did Ash Maddock just send me? What is this, Ash? What is this? Oh, no. I'm afraid to watch that. Before I watch that, let me make sure to tell everyone, uh, if you're here live, <laughs> hit that like button. I don't know what the hell Ash just sent me. But what a nice little... Um, foreshadowing of one of the guests that I have today. We've got Ash Maddock in the house. How you doing, buddy? My broski, I'm landed. I'm landed. I'm here. <laughs> I don't bring the drama, bro. They call me problematic, so let's get the show on the road. Uh, <laughs> problematic Ash Maddock. Love hey. to see it. Speak, speaking of <laughs> things I love, and everybody loves, there's not a damn soul that walks this earth that has crossed paths with my next guest and said, hey, that's a stinky motherfucker. Well, I shouldn't have probably said mf -er in the first five minutes of this stream, but nonetheless, bro, welcome on Kuva. My guy, how are we doing? For, forget all the introductions. Let's just get on to what Ash has just sent you. <laughs> <laughs> you, want no. me to, you want me to play it? <laughs> it's, of course, I do. You can't build build it up that much and then just let it go, can you? So, but I haven't proof watched this. I don't know what he sent me. I haven't trust, proof trust as I said, trust in the process. In this case, could be risky. I think go for it. Ash wouldn't let you down. So before I say hello to the beautiful, sexy chat that is here, I should. All right, I'm gonna upload it. I'm uploading it to the Streamyard. One second. Um. The thumbnail has me not looking forward to it. I would put it that way. Like the, <laughs> let's just see what we got here. Oh boy. Nice, nice. We were talking about the the fans crying about four nil, so it made sense after the wah wah wah. I brought a little baby Jacob into town. <laughs> was, that that... Bit, was that a little bit of Slipknot in the background? I've, I've, I've detected that. <laughs> Maybe whoever that was. I hope they don't hit me with the copyright, but nonetheless. I like the photo. I kind of miss wearing the beanie. I think I need to bring the beanie back. It's just not really cold anymore, so it doesn't make sense to wear a beanie. Whereas before it was a bit nipply in here, and now it's not. Now it's really not. But what a great way to start the show. One seventy. I, I already I, I dropped wonder, a. Yeah, I wonder what that could have been a reference to. I really do. 
<laughs> Is there such a thing as Wawa gate? <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. All I'm saying is, I've already told you, Danny Kiriakou and I think we want a T-shirt made with you and Jacob says, says wah, wah. I'm, I'm just saying it will sell. That's all. <laughs> it's very uh, two stark different messages. One's talk to me nicely and the other one's wah, wah. Um, I, I've, you know, that was interesting. I did lose my cool, so I apologize. I try to thrive on the immaculate vibes i try to thrive on the uh on feeling good feeling great you know so i wasn't really feeling good or great in that moment i would say that it was the the tears that broke the camel's back so to speak if i may um but you know what <laughs> wah -wah. I, I, people like the wah -wah. maybe i do need to put it on a shirt that's uh uh what was the show about i don't even remember something about sunny i don't know oh yes oh <laughs> yes it's always about sunny technically every show can be about sunny because he has taught him through and through for every single reason but let me just ask the initial question and just a quick yes or no and then i have something else to caveat so kuva quick yes or no is sunny world class right now yes ash is sunny world class right now no, I'm joking. Not yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, Whoa, dear buddy! Would have ruined the whole show. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> but I do have, I do have caveats, though. I do have um, a few curveballs. Sure. So okay, it's not gonna... we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Let me, let me see. Who got the first place prize today? Forty-five mm -hmm. votes in the chat. Seventy-six percent says, "Of course." He has been for some time. 11% says not quite there, but very close. 2% says no way he's overrated and underperforms. And 11% says it's a subjective word. Who cares? He is goaded. And, you know, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, I think it's one of these things. It's a very subjective word, right, Kuva? The word world class, when I say world class, <sighs> I had pizza the other day. I think it's world class, but an Italian may not think so. So there's a difference of opinions, different flavors to savor, so to speak. Kuva, the world, the, the world, the word world wow. class. Is what that what does that word mean? To stopped. Am I? I still see you. I still see Maybe you. Maybe it is you. Um, the, uh, I hear Ash. Broke, the... broke not badly for me there, just for a second. Oh. Um, yeah, I kind of got the gist of it. Yeah, yeah, of course he is. Let's move on. Love it. No. Speaking of moving on, I have something for you, Paul. And it, or Paul, damn it. There it is. I ruined it. I fucked it. This whole show. It's like you yeah. guys said, here, here, we're going to jump in the car with you, Jacob. Can you drive us to Taco Bell? And instead of driving us to Taco Bell, I drove us off a fucking highway. And now we're in a ditch. But what what's better than falling into a ditch with... Two friends, three friends. We've got Paul from the hey. Hotspur Hippie. Hey. Wah, wah. Big up, Paul. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. How you going, man? <laughs> that was a deep you voice. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Oh, my goodness. What have... What, what has... What is it? What? <laughs> Paul, what's up, buddy? How you doing? That's what's fucking up, man. Jeez. Hey, Paul oh, Cole with yeah. the bits. I like this better. Oh, man. I don't even know what the hell we were talking about. Sunny, world class. I said yes. Ash said yes. Kuva said yes. Paul, yes or no question. Is Sunny world class? Well, this is going to be a shit debate, isn't it? Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a fantastic debate. I love it. We're all on the all same. Right, yeah, Technically, we're all on the correct side. So, uh, big so. up Panda Ball with the super chat. Says, Sonny is world class. Best clinical finisher in the Premier League, says Panda. Big up Panda Ball. Appreciate you becoming the first sponsor tonight of today's show that honestly has been going on for almost 12 minutes now. And I can't say I've had one minute of composure so isn't that quite quite interesting but big up panda ball i appreciate that super chat my friend 
Um, I think he is the most clinical finisher, and statistically they would say he is the most clinical finisher in the Premier League right now. And he's honestly, uh, someone brought up Holland. I said, you know, who, who would you rather with the ball at his feet in the box, Erling Holland or Son? And a lot of people were saying Erling Holland, and I thought it was interesting because the amount of big chances missed by Erling Holland this season, you would have to track Sonny's last four seasons to even be close to it. I don't even think, I think you have to go back five seasons um, to add up all of his big chances missed in five seasons, and you have as many as Erling Holland has missed this season that's not even finished yet. So to me, there's no doubt in my mind who I want obviously being the captain, El Padrino of the locker room. What a great guy to set an example as well as a human, as an individual. Multiple managers going on record saying, I would let this man give it to my daughter. That is a bold statement. And shout out Antonio Conte for that. But I, I don't know um, really where this question was going other than shout out Antonio Conte, <laughs> hoping that Sonny would be his son-in-law. I think we all would like Sonny to be a part of our family, to be quite frank. But regardless of him as a as a person, as a finisher, Ash, you said you had some forks in the road for us yeah, in I this think, regard. I think, this is, I think this is the case of Ash. Ash was saying it, saying it earlier. This becomes a case of we're all agreeing he's world class. It's just like who can bring the most controversial caveat to it. That, that's <laughs> what it's going to be about, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like what. <laughs> is the definition of world class if we can define that then we will get an answer but oh, for I me, like Graham Prunus's, um definition which is you could just any team in the world would want you I about to say that does he does he get into any every single team in the world that was one of the um definitions and by that definition does he get into Man City front two I think he does I think yeah. he gets into Man City's front two or gets into their team at least does he get into to Arsenal yes of course does he get into uh, Liverpool? Yeah, I think he gets into Liverpool as well. So, so if that is the definition, then Sonny is world class. I looked at a few stats as well, and it says here that this is from Data MB that he's the highest XG over performer. So that means he's getting in difficult positions where he shouldn't typically score, but he's scoring those goals. So he's outperforming those hard chances he's putting them away and then it says he's the third highest in terms of um expected assists and the third most for key passes so the expected assist means he might be putting a ball into a player but they might not be finishing their dinner that's not his fault he's doing it but you know what can you do so in a different team he might even have more assists and more goals so i think that puts him on another level again um some people argue that Ollie Watkins has got more GA than him, more goals and assists. And so people would say, oh, Watkins might be ahead of him. But that's only this season. So I'm looking at seasons of past. I think Son's outperformed him. I know he's a lot older than him, but I go back to like the Champions League final where um, he stood up. Not Champions League final, Champions League run, sorry. So on the run to the Champions League, when Kane was missing, Son took over. He went up front. He took the reign. And I felt like between him and Mora, they should have started the final. Maybe Kane shouldn't have started that game because he wasn't fully fit, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, outside of that, he won the Golden Boot alongside Salah, joint, joint top scorer. So that shows, again, consistency, because that's what I'm looking for. Is a player, is he a one-hit wonder or is he doing consistent? Because Kane used to be hit with that stick so many times. Can he do it the season after? He did the season after. Can he do it the season after? He did the season after. And Son's been there. Son's been doing that. Um, but yeah, I'll let, I'll let it flow around before I bring any more caveats before, but that's just my opinion <laughs> on Son. Honestly, all you're doing, what you're doing is we're enjoying <laughs> ourselves in the hot tub and you just, you just brought out drinks with all them, with the stats, with all the caveats. You're making us feel real nice. You're talking to me nicely on this Thursday evening. Paul, I want to, you mentioned some guy's quote. I didn't hear what you said. Um, I was too busy, you know, trying to adjust because you're here in the studio with me at United Spurs of America headquarters. Oh, um, oh, half chewy. a Chewy there's he has reported for the show. Um, I got I got Kate Middleton to do the Photoshop here, and she she buggered it up a bit. She she only put half a dog in, so, so you know, blame her. 
I need to figure out what's going on with all that because there's a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm like, who's Kate Middleton? Who is that? Don't worry about it. You haven't had to worry okay. about it for 200 years, man. So, <laughs> oh, oh, she's royal, royal. <laughs> hey, um, hey, do you, do you reckon Erling Haaland's uh, slide in form started when uh, Romero gave him a dust up last year? Because you know, I think that took some uh, steely resolve out of the guy. It's a long awesome. bow, I know. Possibly, possibly. I'm going to say getting shut out versus Brazil's number two and Emerson Royale and the captain of Wales. Huh, oh, yeah. Those two ingredients could be. That's more recent. They scored three. Erling Haaland scored nil. So it's um to me that's what that, that's what I'm going to equate it because in that match I thought he looked atrocious. Uh, he was missing chances left and right, and with all these missed chances, he still has the most goals in the league. That's got to be impressive, right? But this isn't necessarily about Erling Haaland, but they say sometimes in order to measure a man, you must measure him to his peers. But I say fuck the peers. How long the peers been doing that in the Premier League? Doing it in the in the wherever the Norway League or in, and then the Bundesliga is one thing. He did it in the Bundesliga too. He scored some goals. He was pretty all right. But guess what? Got plucked and went to the Premier League, and now he's become Tottenham Hotspur's fifth leading goal scorer in the history of a club that's been around since the year 1882. To me, number five on that list, that speaks for itself. And you look at the things he's accomplished while being in poor sides throughout his years here. He hasn't been in the best of sides, but he has been the bright, him and Kane. It's really, they broke records in the Premier League together. And I think Kane elevated him, he elevated Kane, and... And, you know, the, I guess the one thing that people may say is like, oh, well, he doesn't have a trophy. What has he won, you know? I would say he's won a Puskas. I would say he's won Asian Player of the Year like fifth, six years consecutively. That's no small feat. I would also say he's won Golden Boot in the Premier League. Well, some would say joint because Mohamed Salah, but that would be, I guess, technically accurate. But I don't want to look at it in that light. Look, regardless of, like, the things that, He's accomplished. I, I like the caveat of does he go? Do, does he fit into every top sides club? Paul, for you in the history, like I know I kind of rambled there, and I, I was trying to ask you a question, but the the most question I want to ask is like when you were watching Spurs when you were younger, and Kuva, this is going to apply to you as well. Have you seen a scorer, a a a footballer like him, and who? And what would be the names of some of the players? And I'm going to say that if there's any finishers like him that you've seen, it's they're likely a club legend that I've heard of. So I'm I'm just genuinely curious to see if that is true. But is there anyone like Son that you've seen yeah, in, in well, your? Yeah, I, well, I'd go. Well, there's a, there's a few. I mean, I'm not saying who's better and who's worse, but I'd say um, you know Steve Archibald was was amazing, and uh, Clive Allen had a a ridiculous season, scored a smorgasbord of goals. Um, Gary Lineker, actually, I, no, I'd go sort of sunny over over Gary Lineker. Look, we've had it, we've had a few, but but Sun's up there, you know. You know, I don't I I don't really like you know, comparing players from different eras too much, but um, you can just say someone was great in their time, and if they were playing in any other team that time, they'd probably be great as well, you know. If if you if you're a good footballer and you and you've got what it takes to become good in, you know, 1950, I'm sure if you know Doctor Who and Atardis transported you to today, you'd be good as well. So, uh, but yeah, we've had a few. But I, I find I'm I'm excited, I'm excited watching Sun because you just know when he gets the ball, it's it's a goal, isn't it? It's a goal, and and um, yeah. you know, him him more than the other players, I, I guess, is more of a leader though. You know, those players were just sort of out and out sent forwards, and maybe. In some of their cases, they're a bit of a loner in their personality, whereas Son is, uh, you know, he's a man of the people. He, he he fires the troops up and he represents the club really well. So he's up there. He's up there for sure. Yeah. Well, that's very nice to hear. Kuva, what about you? Same question. And is there anyone that you've seen that generally makes you think like, oh, that, that kind of reminds me of, of this it's guy? A difficult one. It's a difficult one. Um, for Spurs, no, I think he's kind of unique from what I've seen. Um, we've had wingers with tons of flair and trickery. That's not Sonny's game, really. Sonny's really direct, very pacey, with lethal finishing. 
again, though, you can't compare him to a main striker because he doesn't play through the middle very often. He's been generally deployed as a wide wide forward. So he doesn't quite fit that role either. I think of all the people, I've, players I've seen in recent years, the closest fit was one at Man United, Andre Kanchelskis. I think uh, he was a player that was very pacey, very direct, and you didn't really think of him as a traditional winger. He was more of a sort of goal-scoring winger. Um, you wouldn't be looking at him getting tons of assists from crosses. He would get into the box and hurt the opposition by scoring. I think that's closest I've seen in playing style. But I don't think we've had anybody that really compares to Sonny, just what he does for the team. It's kind of, um, he's almost a niche. He's a, he's a specialist, if you like. Um, some players are just like that and they're great at it. I think if he had played through the middle the whole time and we hadn't had Harry Kane, God knows what sort of numbers he might have had, providing we had somebody up to the task of supplying with them with chances. But um, fantastic player. I think going back to what Ash said, though, it was the, exactly the same as I would say with uh, when it comes to world class. I, I look at it as a world class player is somebody who can comfortably slot into any team in the world without looking out of place. And I don't see which team wouldn't want him. I can't think of a manager anywhere given the chance to have Son for nothing, would go, nah, don't need him. They would take him. Uh, Pep in a heartbeat, of course he would. Uh, who wouldn't want somebody that's that lethal with finishing in their side? Um, the caveat I'm going to throw into the end, uh, on top of that, will be it's all relative to which period of time you, you are playing. Because right now, he's one of the best in the world, will get into any team. If you go back, say, you know, 30 years and, you, you, you're looking at all the sort of Ronaldinho's and the Ronaldo number nines and the, the, the Stoichkovs in the world and the the, uh, the, 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 sort of the all these big, big names. There, there was, seemed to be a bigger concentration of that kind of talent at the time. If Sonny was playing back then, perhaps I wouldn't have the same opinion. I'd be looking at other players that have got a little bit more to their game. Um, but right now... I think uh, he is up there. He is right up there with anyone. Um, but of course, there's going to be exceptions, of course, but there, there will be. Uh, there's always going to be these uh, generational talents, and I think it gets used too much that phrase. For me, general generational talents is Ronaldo, CR7. It's it's Messi. I don't really see anybody else in modern. Era Sonny's the only seven I see. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. But yeah, no, but to be fair, I mean, even Son mentioned how he looked up to Ronaldo at one stage in his career. Yeah, you know, sure. sure. So who, I agree who, with what? you on this. Yeah, I um, have five oh. different attributes. Um, sorry to cut you, Kuba. Um The five attributes I would look at. Um, it's a good thing that you mentioned some of the '90s strikers because you look at technique. '90s strikers had that, and then the mindset. So we talk about clutch moments where. Players used to get the team over the line and they could pick the ball up and they could literally win the game by themselves. That doesn't really happen nowadays. Like it's more more of a team collective effort, in my opinion. But back then you could rely on a player and he would stand up and he would get you over the line because he was world class. That's what you would kind of associate with being a world class player. So yeah, mindset, mentality, turning up in like finals or big games you know it matters Sonny has done that to be fair to him Man City he scored against he scored against Liverpool and he scored against Arsenal and United he's done it in all the big games but in terms of like cup competitions that's when we're saying oh can Sonny step up and be that player to take us to the next level that's the question mark there in my opinion um, that's the small caveat I would have physicality if you're looking at footballers from the 90s they have bags of physicality, in my opinion. Um, some of them, I would say, maybe not so. So you had that Kieran Zaghi's, your um, Shevchenko's, your your even going that to Baggio or Romario. Romario had a bit of physicality about him, but Son, I feel like that's a stick he does get beaten over the head with. Oh, he can't play against the low block because he's not physical enough. I think he's proved that he can play against a low block. I feel yeah. like I would agree that you can play in the middle because, and here's another point, is your game intelligence or your game, your your awareness where you should be at the pitch, when to move into space, when to run into space. And he has bags of that because he's shown for, for um, the goal he scored 
on the weekend and other goals where he scored against Palace, his movement was exceptional. And that's what allowed him to get that goal in the first place and create space for others as well. I remember against Burnley when he chipped the keeper, he kind of faked one way, then he went the other way and then received the ball. Then he dinked it over. And that kind of remind me of a Stoichkov or um, uh, uh, what's it called? What's a Danish striker? He used to be a Danish kind of striker slash midfielder. Loud drop. Loud drop. Loud drop used to do that. Loud drop used to just dink keepers like for fun. Yeah, and that's true. something I haven't really seen a lot of. I did see, however, um, Nunes do it a couple games ago. And I'm like, you don't see that anymore. Back in the 90s, you used to see players just dink players, just dink them. Different types of finish, off the cuff, so instinctive. Um, and that's what I would associate with world class. But different players have different attributes. And my argument is that Sonny is a slightly different player. And the amount of finishes that he's done from outside the box, similar as well. So you can't even say, oh, you know, it was a fluke. He has that right foot on lock. I remember against Leicester, bang two, one with the right foot outside the box when we beat them 6-2 at home. And then one with the left foot on the opposite side. I said, yeah. That for me is world class. I can't speak of the man any higher. When he did that, I said, "Yeah," and that's when we needed him as well. I remember we needed to beat Leicester that that season, and he just we came, we rolled him over. He scored a hat trick, and for me, it was formidable. Some people might say in the air, that again, like strikers of the nineties, they were deadly in the air. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like Ashby says, the only thing Sonny doesn't do is score headers, and right. I would agree with that. And I remember even at a certain point, I remember it was last year, maybe the year before, where I just felt like I didn't even want Sonny taking the corners because him outside of the box with the ball at his feet, I would like him to get those second chance opportunities, you know, in a corner. It gets cleared away by the defense. It falls to somebody. And typically it's someone who can bang it from outside the box. And Son, inside, outside the box. The, to me, when I look at the word, the word world class, and I want to get everyone's opinion, like what is the word world class to you? Because it is a subjective term. And so some may say he's not world class. He's a level below. I see it in the chat. I've seen it in the in the poll. I see it on Twitter. And I hear that, and I, and I agree. But when I look at the player like as a player, he can finish with the left. He can finish with the right. He can finish anywhere inside the box, outside the box, in and around the box. And like Ash says, the one thing you can say he doesn't do well is head the ball. But even in the summer, people try to say Sun lost a, a bit of pace. I didn't believe it one bit. I have clips still saved on my phone versus Bournemouth. Ball at his feet, burning past two defenders. Max Ahrens is a right back that is heavily acquitted to, or they, they attribute him to having quick pace and being fast. He burned him without the ball with the ball and not just max aarons a bunch of people on that sure, Bournemouth yeah. side and that was just one example of the last game that i had saw and people were saying son's not good with the ball at his feet at the left winger he's not this he's not that and i think people have always doubted him and to me i've never really understood why and so the the word world class you know they say oh he's a world-class finisher he's not a world-class player and i guess I think, oh, that oh, would be sorry. go ahead paul no 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 go ahead i i, th I think also um Sonny frees up Ange to take care of other stuff. So by all accounts, Ange at half time uh, against Villa just said, keep doing what you're doing. And I think part of the reason he was able to say that was because in the first half, when Son was finding himself in space and not getting the ball, or you could see the, the other players weren't playing the ball in the right area. Son was up him, you know, Son was, you know, not losing his shit, but he was making it very clear. This is what you've got to do. So you go to half time and Ange doesn't have to say that because he knows he's got a guy that's out there on the pitch where it counts that's doing that job anyway. He doesn't have to, you know, you know, place a booty and all that crap. He can rely on Sun to um, get the team kicking over. So I think uh, I think Sun's leadership is fantastic, man. Fantastic. I love the way yeah. he represents the club and everything. Just just to add on to that, Paul, as well, I think another world-class attribute of his, and to be world-class, you need to be a team player. I think he's definitely a team player. And you mentioned it just then as well. The amount of runs he makes for his team to pull defenders away, to open up channels, to open up space. Even with, like Jacob said, he pulled out to the left. That's being a team player. He doesn't have to be the number nine. He can play out the left and he's still doing a job. He's still delivering. He's still putting quality balls into the box. It was so deep, but at one point it was like, oh, if only we could have Son as a number nine and the winger. Do you know what I mean? Because there was no one that was as good as him as a left winger, and there was no one as good as him as a number nine. So that's how important he is in our squad. 
So yeah, that's just another thing for me. Uh, the attribute, that was the fifth attribute I had. It was technique was one. Number two was mindset. Number three was game intelligence. Number four was te uh, team player. And number five was, um, I'd say physique, physique. No, I, I, th I think the team player bet, that's more of a modern trait really, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think as I was growing up, you used to have teams, they'd have a star player and he could basically just sit around on his ass all the game and just wait for the ball to be supplied to him. And he'd still be the mega star. Nowadays, you have to offer a lot more, don't you? You have to be involved in the build-up. Most managers like, uh, well, I wouldn't say most, but an awful lot of managers like playing with that aggressive press at the front. If you're not doing that, you, you're not going. You're not going to get into the team. Prime Barcelona under Pep, you would see Messi and Iniesta working their ass off up front when they lost the ball, just to win it back instantly. So it is definitely a part of it, and I think that ties in with mindset as well, doesn't it, Ash? It's all. Uh, it's that all round in game intelligence. It's all that all round uh, uh, ability to recognise what you need to do and maintain that level throughout the game. Uh, I think that's it. That's basically the difference uh, between today's game and the uh, days days of uh, days of old. Um, I used to actually find it quite funny watching Matt Letizia in the top flight in, in England because he always came across as this lazy sort of. Uh, He'd be out on the night out before, have a kebab in his hand sort of player. Didn't really want to work hard. And then he'd do something absolutely amazing on the Saturday. And he'd be getting like goal of the week, goal of the month, month after month after month. And almost every week scoring to, scoring a goal and keeping really crappy Southampton side up by scoring 25 goals in a season. And he was a midfielder. Yeah, I don't think you'd get away with being that sort of player anymore. And Don no. Belly's tried it. So if I, I think it's a funny thing when people talk about lazy players, because or not, or maybe luxury players. Glenn Oddle used to get accused of that. You know, Paul Gascoigne wouldn't be able to do it all game, and I, I don't think it is lazy. I think they're they're in the game, and they can see when it's on for them to do something and when it's not, and they know when it's not on just not to, you know, waste their time buggering it up. They, they, their, their football awareness and football brains are so so well developed. They don't have to run around like a blue ass fly all the time. But I think you're right. You know, that, that, those days are a little bit behind us now. But um, maybe they'll come back. You never know. Football's always football, isn't it? True. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I don't know. I just, like, I, I saw a comment earlier. I think it was from Donovan saying that, you know, world class to them, or maybe it was Rowan Kumar, said, um, you know, world class to me is making it into the world's best starting 11. And... To me, I don't know that if you're saying left winger, to me, Vinicius Jr. would probably be the best left winger. Unless Mbappe's playing left winger, then you probably say Mbappe. As a striker, Harry Kane. Uh, any yeah. other strikers out there world class other than Harry Kane? So if he could be the back, if you'd someone have, say you'd Holland, have to argue Holland to be an yeah. argument as well, wouldn't they? That, yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's when I get to this point. Well, we've already proven in the previous thirty minutes of the show that, well, maybe like the previous ten to fifteen minutes ago, not not the entire thirty minutes, because that was a quite a shitty open for me. But to me, Son is a better finisher, all around as a striker than Erling Holland. And I don't think that's too fucking outlandish to say. Some may say I'm I'm deluded and I'm biased, and I'm trying to look at it as the most unbiased way, like not thinking about Sun as a human, not thinking about all the extracurriculars that Sun offers us, but thinking about it in a sense of like talent level in a world's eleven. What am I picking? And like Harry Kane to me is the best striker in the world. Second would be I don't know who. And that's where I get into the point where I'm like, well, if he's the backup to the world's best striker, then that might be all right. And I, there's actually a good question that I start here from Rich. Big up Rich says, question, if Son is world-class, Kane is world-class, how many world-class players do we need to actually win a trophy? And that's quite a well, fun question. The thing is as well, though, with that question, <clears throat> when they were around, I don't think we had the centre-backs. And our goalkeeper was on, our way, on his way out as well. Um, and the full-backs... Is there were so many that, that back six, I think, was a big part of the reason why, you know, we weren't so successful. 
And I just think to get over the line, you need a strong bench, in my opinion. Your pet, your bench, when players aren't quite doing it, you can say, oh, let me take someone off the bench to affect the game. It's 20 minutes left. These legs are tired. Let's bring... We didn't really have that in Kane's peak, in Son's peak, in any of the other peaks. The mark that we've always had attacking players, but we've never had a, 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 a strong 15. It's always been a strong 11, in my opinion. Um, if I'm going back to the Walker and Rose day, it's been yeah. for Thompson and now, and now the Royals. But hey, let's just yeah. in. You, you, uh, you're right. Prime, prime, prime Poch years, um, when we got so close to winning the league, and you'd look at the bench and it'll be uh, Bentele, Mason, and Kudu, Storm, Dyer, Davies. Uh, that, that was the difference between us and the other teams around us. Maybe not so much Leicester. Leicester just had that outrageous kind of... Um, well, they never really got any injuries throughout the season, did they? They didn't have to rely on their second string very much. But, I mean... Yeah, they were less confident than us. Sorry, Cole. That's true. No, yeah, they're in this. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh, big up, big up, Jess from JSY Talks Football, grabbing a membership. Welcome to the Lovers Lane, Jess, and thank you for becoming a sponsor of tonight's episode. Big ups to you. Hope you're doing well and feeling too blessed to be stressed on this fine Thursday evening. Um, I don't know. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter if you can make the world's best eleven. That doesn't make you world class i would say if you could make the world's best squad and in a squad i think son absolutely does make it maybe not in the starting 11 but off of the bench um in in like a fantasy sense right like w the world's best 11 but you know we've been talking about it for a little bit i think we all kind of come to the conclusion look <laughs> big up taha says what kind of what kind of budge is smoking question is that of course son is world class and then you go down just a little bit. He is a world class finisher, but not a world class player. That's what I'm saying. This is a point. I think, I think if you play as a forward and you're a world class finisher, you're a world class player. Yeah. So I could hear that argument as well. Um He's like he's like Ronnie O'Sullivan the way he scores goals. You know, you just know where it's going. <laughs> you know what's funny? Back in the day, they used to do world's best eleven versus Europe's best eleven. It was mad. So they used to get the, the best teams, the best players at the Euro. Um, all the clubs, they would pick 11 at, for, for like Europe. And then like South America and Africa would join up and then they would have the best players from then and they used to face off each other in the summer. So it'd be interesting if there was like a world or an Africa slash America, Euro Asia versus Europe's best 11. I wonder if someone will get in. I think someone will get into that. Do you know what I mean? If it was, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I agree. Slash Asia and Africa versus uh, Europe. Huh? What'd you say? Uh, and Oceana. Don't forget, you know, we've got some star players. All right, let's not have a wah wah moment. <laughs> <laughs> Run that back a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking hilarious oh my goodness um jim and i says son's father said in an interview that his son is not world class that, I, I mean if i that. speak if i speak big up cursor like secured big up jacob big up cursor my friend um phil coy's member for two months just coming in here saying coy's 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 with a little um here you go right back at you phil uh can't wait to get you back on the channel my friend Hope isn't, you're doing isn't well. what sonny's father said or kind of fits into the stereotype of the, the the sort of asian mentality when it comes to you know family i wasn't gonna say it uh yeah, i wasn't well, gonna say it's, it, it they, there's so many times you see uh little uh memes made of it and things like you know the son will come back and say i've got 99 percent in my maths test and the father will just disappoint him and go so why not the hundred percent it's like it's that pushing for more all the time <laughs> So oh, no, I don't makes, know. For, for me, okay. that makes, you, if you look at it in that way, it's what Son's father said is actually him just trying to push him further. It, it, you kind of get that. I think it is, but I don't think it's an Asian thing because David Beckham's dad was a right <laughs> as well. Yeah, true. You know, it's quite a common <laughs> thing for football parents to be very pushy. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it is a stereotypical thing, though. I mean, it's obviously not. Yeah. The, yeah it's, it, anyway. Someone, so, so Ash here says, that's just Asian parents. Mine have never said well done to me ever. Uh, Ash, well done. All right, you're on spring break. Well done for getting through the semester thus far. Well done today. I hope every day somebody in your life tells you well done. Because See, your words now, maybe Ash I'm, is just... Maybe I'm Ash too soft. Great. Ash is just going to get complacent after you've praised them now. <laughs> and then ah. you know, the slide. Yeah, now she's like, oh, oh Jacob said I did it. Now I can just do nothing. Yeah. I can relate. Like, my, my parents never praised Eva. So, you know, it's all good. Might not just be an Asian thing. Yeah, it might not. You just might have be... to get caught with that wall. Okay, it's not that deep. It's all right. I'm o- I'm okay. I'll go over it. It's all right. <laughs> the outlaw says, "How did they beep the live? The Big Brother's watching. That's what it is, right, Paul?" Yeah, you, YouTube are full of. <laughs> they're just everywhere, See? aren't they? I think I think they're watching me. <laughs> they are watching you. That's why we tried to bring you here to the studios of United Spurs of America, and still they censor you. They follow you everywhere, and they censor you. Um, so, Kuba's so right. Angel's dad did it to of... Angel as well, and that's so something anybody... that you've talked about, Paul. Is like the Australian culture is kind of like that, right? Like, oh, you think you're hot shit? Well, what is it called? Where they cut you down? Something about cut you down well, syndrome? I don't know if it's even something. cutting it down. Like, like Angel's, um, Angel's sto- one of Angel's stories about his dad was, um, you know, Angel was pretty chuff when we won the 2015 Asian Cup, and uh, but his dad said. Because we won it in extra time, Sun scored a goal to equalise late in the game. But the, uh, Australia went two one up and one in the, in in extra time. So he's all chuffed the bits, and he tells his dad, and his dad says, "Yeah, but if you made this substitution earlier, you could have won without going to extra time." So it's like it's it's not really being too tough. It's just uh, it's keeping you maybe level more than anything. Because I think you know when you're a sportsman, it's very easy to get carried away. And when you get carried away, maybe you lose a bit of your fire or a bit of your humility. So, you know, having someone around just keeps you grounded. You know, there's a – and good football managers do that really well. Like, um, you know, Brian Clough, uh, Stuart Pearce uh, got an England call up and um, played for England. And he's all like, you know, all chuffed with himself. Um, and uh, Brian Clough sees him in the dressing room and says uh, – I noticed here in the program there's an advert for Stuart Pierce electricians. Is that right? And Stuart Pierce says, Yeah, well, you know, it's a sideline from a brother and that. He says, Right, here's my Barbara's iron. Fix it by Saturday or you're not playing. You know, so it brings people back down to earth. And I think that's all it is. It's, it's not being an arsehole or anything. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, just give a hug. Say I'm proud of you, boy. Just once, maybe just make them feel good. You know, just once. Nah, just they, a little, at least, at little, least a little, little, They can't right. just be swimming in the ocean entirely without little, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got to you gotta help the kids, man. Give the kid a damn hug. Has, has anyone else noticed that Paul's become a menace since he's got his new sound set up? <laughs> yep. He, yeah, yeah, he's becoming a real menace. I'll tell you that much. Wing, wing. <laughs> wing, wing. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey, there it is. Big up, Bob Down Under. How you doing? Um, Derek Smith says Real Madrid is strongly pursuing a deal for Tottenham defender Christian Romero. Um, I refuse to believe that this has any substance to it, Derek Smith. Maybe you're saying this to get me riled up, but um, that's not nice. Don't don't tell me this. If this is even close to happening, um, I'm not, I'm just not going to be okay with it. I'll be completely honest. Good, good. Ah. He loves Tottenham. He ain't going anywhere. All right. That's oh, I know. I have one of these unpopular opinions on this sort of thing. I Uh-oh. think if. I just think if I love oh, you, well, you know I love Cutie. Uh, you, you and I, the door the bloke, Jacob. But uh-huh. if Real Madrid came in with an offer of, say, 200 million quid, I'd say, thank you very much. Just go out and buy the next one and then buy the next couple of players to go with it, improve the team overall. Kind of like there's the no Cutie you can go yet. out there. You can't replace Cutie. There's no other Cutie. 
No, so you get the you get somebody else, you, don't you? Dragasin's looking very good since he's uh, since he stepped in. Don't the even Kuva. <laughs> don't even. All I don't I'm, like all this. I'm saying is it's the greater good sometimes. The greater you, good. You, Who's that good for? Sell, Ain't good for nothing. So one good player to get in three great players, then then uh, it's it's a, it's the right thing. Like I said, Liverpool did it with Coutinho to bring in Allison and uh, Van Dijk. It's it's sometimes it's a sensible move, but let's face it, Real Madrid are not going to be offering two hundred million for Romero, are they? They'll probably come in with like an offer of sixty, if anything at all, and we'll say no, thank you. True, true, true. Plus, this is the thing: Real Madrid are about to spend how much on Mbappe? Allegedly, also going for Alfonso Davies, therefore nullifying Real Madrid coming and taking Destiny Ugodi, which is actually very good news. Um, they are trying to put the Galacticos back together. That's what the rumor is out there at the Bernabeo. And maybe Cuti Romero, they're trying to make the, him a part of it. He, whew, don't even. No, I ain't doing it. You said 200? Fuck that. No. No amount of money can buy my love. All right? Is there a price tag? Would you, are you, ta- I mean, realistically, 200 million, like, yeah, what is on. the lowest you would take? I, I hate that I'm going to entertain this conversation, but only for a moment. <laughs> Ash, what is the low? What is the lowest you'll take for Cuti Romero? For me, lowest one hundred and seventy-five million. That's as low I'll as I'll go, 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 sir. Go I will go lower than that. No, I will go lower. One hundred and seventy-five mil. I guess two hundred is fine. I'm, I'm no, starting at two hundred. I, I would take one hundred and ten to one hundred mil. I'll be honest because. The, uh, he would be breaking the record, wouldn't he? If he if he went for something crazy like that, plus. I think we could replace him with um, that that um, defender that we were linked with before, Tapsoba. Um, we he'll probably be get become a lot less, but I'm just saying we might have some money well, left. Soba, if Tapsoba's so good, like everyone said, oh, creamy weemy over fucking Tapsoba, why isn't Real Madrid going for him? Huh? Perhaps they know. are. We're in a league, though, with a, good. With a, with a Just do it and go away. That's what I say. <laughs> Paul, what's the lowest you would take for Kuti? Uh, no, he's not 200 for million. Sale. No, he's not for sale. 200 I'm not million? Into the, no, 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 no. I don't want to. I, 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 I don't. I want to see the the days of Spurs being a selling club of their best players. I don't want that anymore. So I want him. I want him around. He, he's he's part of the team. He's doing a good job. What you know. You, I don't think it's worth it. Who are you going to get? I don't think we're that far off filling out our squad to a certain level. So I, I'd keep him. I, he's not for sale. Bugger off, Real Madrid. Sod off. Good tap Bro, over. People are saying 80 mil. I'll, 80 mil, oh, I'll no. slap you. I will <laughs> take my gloves off. Uh, disrespect. Disrespect. <laughs> Actually, the, this is what I would text. No, I'm not going to play the clip. I was going to play a clip. I'm not going to do it. How much did Caicedo go for to Chelsea? 115 or 105? Wow. Romero's got to be more than that, hasn't he? 200. Double. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What, J- Jacob and, and the channel say 200 from Madrid. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. Stefan up. says 80. OTC says 40. OTC is smoking crack cocaine, I'm convinced. 40 mil. Um, 40 mil? What the, is, Jacob, what the fuck? The thing is, Go Jacob, ahead, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you and Paul, but right that's on the uh, premise that I don't know who we're going to be replacing him with at the moment. If I knew who the replacement would be and the two players that we'd get in, let's say two players that as well that the extra money buy, brings in, um, that would uh, sway me. But to go into the unknown and just say we're just selling him, uh, no, of course not. You've got to have a plan. Well, if there's let's let's obstinate in this hypothetical scenario with a plan in place, I'm still saying 200. G <laughs> Mars says Fair 90. Enough. I see 90, a couple hundred. It's got to be more than 100. Got to be. Anthony costs fucking 90, 100. Mudrick costs 90 or 100. Caicedo, 105, 110. Romero's got more about? goals than Anthony. Well, but, but, but Romero's got more goals than Anthony. Do you think Romero's have the turn if Romero came knocking? 
Or do you think he'd be like, no, I'm supposed hey, to lie. He better turn it back. He, if it turns, it better fucking turn back. That's all I'm saying. You see the way he... <laughs> huh? That's love. It's, it's, it's yeah, some, that's what I'm saying. I've, something I've said in the past. Um, I'm Spurs. I've been I Spurs did. all my life. But if I'm playing for Spurs and Real Madrid suddenly come in, I'll be halfway to the airport with clothes hanging out <laughs> my three days before, <laughs> before the rumours hit the mainstream. Sexy! Uh, <laughs> Into the sun, uh, I th- As much as I love my club, I realise <laughs> the, the entity that is Real Madrid, it's colossal. Uh, well, you know, uh, big, uh, big up Panda Ball says Kimmich plus Kim and Ye plus 80. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, big up I'll, Panda I'll Ball. Up I'll take this deal. Everyone's good with this deal. This is all. Wait, wait. Do you not hear about Eric Dyer? How he's transformed in some, into some super defender? <laughs> uh, he's doing his same old bullshit. Same old um, bullshit. He likes he made- he the <laughs> Six games, gets the manager's confidence. Now he's got his new contract. He'll start sliding away. Absolute <laughs> shit show. Oh, that is. That is Kimmich is a bit on the decline at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Some say uh, Eric Dyer yeah, showed up no, and he's like, so "Oh, is that what a <laughs> is that what a However, natural six looks like?" <laughs> Yeah. Big up Panda Ball, big up Panda Ball. Um, Howie says, Jacob, because of this discussion, I can see it on X, quote, rumor has it, Cuti Romero and Real Madrid being discussed for 175 mil. Spurs looking for the 205 mil. That's, that's what we better start with. But look, um, I, I, I we talked about selling Romero in this hypothetical scenario for way too long. We're almost on an hour, so real quick, I haven't even said once to – if you want, push the like button. It's free. It costs you nothing. How many votes do we have in the poll? Let me see. 124 votes. So surely, but don't call me surely, you're going to help this dog eat some dinner tonight. You remember the rules. I hate that I have to repeat them, but there's over 103 people watching on YouTube and like 85 people watching on Twitter. So the rules are 100 likes or the dog gets it. All right. <laughs> 100 dog 100 100 likes or the dog don't get to eat dinner but y'all been a really steady bunch since i've made this proposal we have never gotten under 100 likes so i'm real confident i can feed the dog tonight last night dog had some of my dinner the night before dog had some of my dinner because we hit 150 likes dog gets a bite of jacob's dinner but if we hit 200 likes i will buy him a steak and you know the closest we've gotten was 193 since I've started this, the closest we got was one. I almost had to film myself at the grocery store. Here I am buying Chewy a fucking steak and then grilling it and serving it. Ah, that. I, I, good thing we haven't hit the 200, but you know what? There we are. So 100 likes you, you see, or the dog to gets it. a lot of value in the number 200 then. 200 is the number. It's the magical number. 200 mil, you can have Kuti. All right. For 200, you can. 175, ooh, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Anything anything less than 100? Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? That's my direct response if, if um, yeah. that happens. Big up, Tommy G. How you doing? Um, the next thing that I did want to talk about is Fulham. Now, I started off the show by mentioning the likes of Adama Traore. Last time we seen this man. Last time we seen this man, Paul. He scored the game winner um, against us when we were playing Wolves. Now, this man's got game winners in and around his boots. Got the game-winning assist for Fulham versus United. And then two matches ago, got the game. I don't know if it was game-winning goal because I think they won 3-0. But he got the, the cherry on top of the pie at the very end. So a man coming in, doing the things that they said he couldn't do. Much like Brennan Johnson, which <laughs> don't make me pull out the list of all the people Brennan Johnson has more GA than because it's an extensive list. All right. But Adama Traore... 
I'm saying if he starts, he contributes to some goal, some kind, at some time. Whether he's a sub, he's going to contribute to some goal. This man is a myth. He's a legend um, that is Adama Troy. But with or without Adama, Ash, what do you think about Fulham? They had some decent form lately. They've been banging some goals <laughs> due, to, due to Adama Troy, by the way. But Ash... When you see Fulham come, well, we're going to be going to Craven Cottage. I was going to say they come to town, but we're going to Craven, the Craven Cottage. Are you craving some cottage cheese? Some chicken cottage, yeah, more like. But um, in terms <laughs> of Fulham, um, what can I say, man? We should really put them to the sword because we do have better quality. However, do not think it's going to be an easy game. They do like to play with a back four, so that's a good sign. We don't like back threes, we like back fours. So um I remember the last game they had Bassi and he was playing out of position because they were missing a player. And that's what we targeted. We think we targeted their I think was it their right hand side? We really targeted. But the link up between Rich, not Rich Hardison, sorry, Madison, it was the wrong son, Madison and Son was sublime. So Son scored a goal first and it felt like it was outside the box, but it was on the cusp. And he just curled it in top corner, beautiful. Then he supplied Madison in the second half, and Madison took his goal beautifully. Um, so, yeah, what they aim to do is they try to press us in the middle. So they won't do that high pressing thing. They'll try to press us in the middle. And I just remember Robinson and William being really busy um, on that left hand side, being up and down. Robinson. Robinson's really a great left back. Shout out America. Yeah. 1776 oh. but anthony robinson's a pretty good left back i think yeah no he is i think he did well um against us so um i know they've got also uh Pereira. he's not bad he's, he's decent he came from manchester united but he slotted in well he hasn't really kicked on this season but i thought last season he was a bit of a problem and they've got um a kid called harry wilson i think he's decent he's got a few goals number 11 no wait that's Adama. he's number Eight. I know who you're talking about. He had bleached hair last time we played him. Yeah, I thought he I was remember busy. Saying who the f- yeah, yeah, that kid, that kid. I don't know if he's English or Welsh, but he was he's very. Welsh. He's Welsh. I remember he's checking Welsh. him out. He's Welsh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I just felt like he was quite busy, technically quite good, can shoot as well. Um, he's not afraid to hit from range. So, um, he's a player hey. to look out from. But I come back to Spurs again. I just think that we've got a lot more quality than Fulham in the midfield. Um, Paulinho, I think he will be a massive um, game player for them as well. He gets really busy. I remember against us last time in the air, I think he was really good. He, he got a header and um, yeah, he, he was a bit of a busy body. So I'd say Paulinho, William, um, Adama Troy could mix things up and um the guy is called Reed Dimakova Reed is his name Dimakova Reed the, the guy with the plats he's got plats brown skin light skin guy he was busy bodied as well yeah Bobby De Cordova Reed Jamaican native yeah that's right they've got a team that like when they work as a unit it's not like they've got too many like world class players as we say but as a unit they're quite good and Awobi as well Awobi he's been um having a decent season but but again I just think we'll have too much of them I don't really consider them um a top top team you know that you have to i don't see them like a wolves like wolves i was more worried about because they had the quality in behind and they could hurt us whereas i feel like fulham they will try to work hard and they will have moments where they have the ball and it might be a little bit tighter than we think but over overall i think we should have too much for them do you know what i mean so yeah kuva do you agree with that we should have too much for fulham i agree I think at yeah, every absolutely. position we should have more quality. Even with um, Van de Veen, he will not play versus Fulham. So we're going to get a Raduski Draguski first start for Tottenham Hotspur. Of, of, co- of course we got too much for him. We're on the next step of our 13-game winning streak to win the league this season, aren't we? So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to smash him one. Um, no, I can't sit. Seriously talking, um, I think Ash is right. You, Fulham aren't one of these teams where you look at a superstar in the team. They're just solid players who, uh, when they're working well together, it's a real team effort. They can play some nice football at times. They know they've got defenders in there that are capable of 
holding out for for a point when they need to. Um, they're capable of uh, overturning a few teams with a bit of a shock turn up. Um, however, they've also got it in them to lose pretty badly as well. Um, they, they've had some pretty shaky results before the recent runner games. I mean, I'm thinking, I think it's way to Burnley, I believe they drew, and it was like a, you know, Burnley. Everybody should be mauling them. They, they, they've got virtually nothing to offer, but uh, Fulham struggle with it. But then they got Man United and get a deserved what I thought was a, was a deserved win, um, and they shown they've got something about them. I think if we were playing at home, it would be an easy, easy uh, case for us at the moment. I think with the players that we've got coming back from injury and looks like the likes of Madison's getting a little bit of spark back into his game. Um, a doggy and uh, Poro back as wing backs uh, massively enhances our team. I don't think you can not, uh, um, possibly overestimate just how important they are to us. When they're flying, we're, we're looking good. But um, you never know. You never know. Fulham are just that team that you can easily overlook and they turn up and play a blinder. On the other hand, you can expect too much from them and then you just roll, you know, you just steamroll them. Um, I think we're just going to have too much. I, I really do have this strange feeling that, that we're going to be on a good roll to the end of the season. And I think rather than looking at some of these difficult games coming up uh, uh, as being difficult, uh, too difficult, I think that's going to inspire us. I think we're going to be raising our game. I, I just got this gut feeling about us, us finishing off the season the way we started it. It was that middle of the season's cost us. Um, let's see what we've got. But I don't think Fulham's going to be a huge problem. I think we should do, deal with them quite comfortably. You know, the fact that R Romero injured in the beginning of the season and we we had to go through what we went through, Dragusin for Van de Veen, while it is not a like-for-like -like swap, I think everyone's pretty excited to get a look at, at what we got in January. Paul, for you, Fulham, what do you think? Fuck them. Yeah, I think, that's kind of what I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we're we're ramping up. You know, I was quite happy the way we played against Crystal Palace, and we were improving. And I thought the Villa game was kind of a perfect game. I mean, all the wah, wah. people say you know Spurs struggled <laughs> to score against the low block. I'm out wah, four wah. goals. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what more you want. What the hell do you want? Four goals. Oh, Spurs. Hit the button. Spurs. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Spurs struggled to score against the low block. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Wah. And it still won't be enough. Still won't be. I think. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna overpower. I think Cooper's right. There's no reason why we shouldn't be doing what we're doing at the beginning of the season now. There's. No, I mean, the players are more in tune with the with the philosophy of football. They seem to be growing in confidence. You know, I mean, Brennan Johnson played a, a, a blinder. I thought Pat Matt Saar. I don't, I don't see what Fulham can do. Maybe, maybe they'll they'll try and do what Aston Villa do is just change their their identity. You know, they'll go to a back five because you know that's what bottle jobs do, isn't it? And you know, yet, yet again, you know, I won't. We won't hear after the game after we smash Fulham six nil if uh, you know if they've tried to park the bus. We won't hear anyone say, "Oh, game management doesn't work." I, I've not heard anyone say that yet. And we've beaten seven teams this year who tried that shit against us. We smashed them all. Yeah, okay, we might score in injury time, but that's because you're, you're giving them body shots, you know? You're weakening them up first half, and then second half, bang, they're out. Done. So I don't think... And it's good. We've got a run of about five fixtures now before we play the big boys. I think, uh, I think we could potentially build up a head of steam and we'll be in good shape to face those teams. You know, some of those teams are getting a little bit of injuries creeping in. You know, maybe they'll start, maybe the pressure will start getting to them, especially Arsenal. Man City don't look happy, and I don't think Manchester City are playing well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for the Fulham game and the rest of the season. I think the only way is up, man. It's going to lay down some markers for next year, for sure. It would be yeah, surprising if they went to a back five, because all season they have played with a back four. They've done a 4-2-3-1, but I am quite, I don't know, like, if we beat them and we beat them well, I'll be disappointed because we're going into an international break. And I feel like mm. it's the worst time to have an international break when we're finally picking up momentum. I hate when that kind of just stops your flow, if that makes sense. Yeah. I would have heard us to like 
because then you've got to worry about injuries and players coming back from you know wherever they're from etc i know romero will go to south america along with celso and brian hill i don't know what he's doing i don't think he'll go anywhere but i don't know why i mentioned his name but yeah what are you thinking of brian hill because in in february 1st there was a tweet brian hill wants to stay and fight for his spot on the team and about a month and a half later now it's brian hill looks to return to la liga this motherfucker so his name bro we should have gotten a domitroy like i done said at the time when we got brian hill we should have gotten a domitroy over the line and then guess what the man the myth the legend will be in lily white jacob would have a shirt everyone would be old up be fucking <laughs> slippery all over the place i'd be sliding around every live stream Ooh, hey, look at that him now, riding high, riding high in eleventh place in the Premier League. Well, good, 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 good buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's, he's been injured. He's been fire. injured, and he came. He's been injured, and he came back from injury. And you know what he's done since he's came yeah. back? Got goals and a sit. Well, I'll just I'll just love the sort of excuses we've had from Jacob as to why Trail Race <laughs> just hit the floodlights with his last shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, Sign him up. <laughs> watch, watch, Paul. You're going to be on your watch long, and whenever he bangs one in the back of the net, you're going to be like, oh, that Adama Troy, Jacob tried to warn me. But, uh, again, when Jacob warns you, like a hurricane warning, you know, you can board up your windows and shit, but you don't know old Nessie may be blowing real hard that day. So just watch out now. Um, but this, again, isn't it? A... That one hit below the belt. That Paul, that one, that one hit below the belt. Um, what was I gonna say? <laughs> Just I, I, I'm too distractible for his soundboard. Keep going, you're on it, man. Um, full, um, I'm not too full. Who gave the most recent analysis of Fulham? This show's been fucked. So big up to everybody who's hit the like and who's been a sponsor of tonight's show. Um, I, I will be shouting y'all out, but I have been not on my tip-top form today, so I don't know what's going on. Um, it's been a great show. What are you talking about? I mean, I've had a great time. I've had a great time for sure. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, uh, my full of thoughts... Gonna say it sounded like a bit of an excuse to me, Jacob. Wow, wow. Oh, oh, wham, wham has turned. Uh, wha, there's 200 people, and I'm getting hit with the crickets and the wham, wham. That's that's what's going on. There's 200 people watching the show across all the platforms, and it's wham, wham, Jacob. I said, okay, all right. Um, but you know, shit, just before man, we go I into it, what I was gonna ask. Yeah, go go into, I'm gonna talk about Brian Hill and him leaving. Do you guys, would you lot be happy with um, Werner as a 15 million option being permanent? Kuva, I'll throw it to you because we've had this conversation. Sorry, I was just reading something. I was zoned out for a second there. Sorry, say it again. <laughs> no, no, I was saying if Brian Hill goes out. Wait, I was, yeah, if he goes out. And Werner becomes a 15 million option, would you be happy is what I'm asking uh, right now, no. Um, if he keeps improving to the end of the season, you know, keeps banging in goals, assisting, yeah, he'll prove himself, won't he? But um, it's the same with everybody. You, you, you've got to be consistent. You've got to keep adding something to it all. And what? So, what? Yeah, he's, he's playing for his. He's playing for a contract, really, isn't he? Yeah, and also he's and playing he's for uh, Germany. Yeah, Yeah. Play for Germany, so obviously it's his last chance. He's 28 now, so if he doesn't make it now, then well, he won't make it, will he? He Sorry. didn't make the Germany squad, didn't he? He missed out, right? That's what I saw. Germany's they're they picked their squad for the friendlies coming up, and they left him out. Oh, I don't think he'd be, yeah, it's too early for him. I reckon if he carries on going where the way he's going. He could get a, he could get a recall for the Euros, but no, it'd be too early to get him back for the for the friendlies. I think fifteen you, million for a backup player is that bad deal? Is that a good deal? Can we find an equal or greater talent for that money? Improvement on on um, Brian Hill, or is it not? Is it a backward step? I said the same. I said when we loaned him in the first place, I said I think he is better than Brian Hill. 
what I've seen him do while it was a disappointment for Chelsea fans, what I saw him do for Chelsea is more than I've ever seen Brian Hill do ever. So the the if we're going off of that standard, like I've never got post before, huh. you know what what's this? What, 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 is this? It is better, but is it like? What we deserve, the love we need. I don't know. I don't know. Like if, if, if he carries on going the way he's going, I think then then he deserves it. But I, I'm worried that, you know, if it's a good game and a bad game and all, or, you know, up and down, you know, occasionally brilliant. I, I'm just worried about, you know, a squad place being, being taken up because we've, we, we've, we've had this before and it doesn't matter. The, the amount of money isn't the relevant thing. I don't, well, it's it's not as relevant, you know, because people say, "Oh, well, you know, fifteen million is cheap. It's a it's a bargain." But I don't want, I don't want a player sitting around stinking up the place if he if he goes off the boil. I'm not saying yeah, he will. That's what Brian Hill's done. Yeah, Brian Hill absolutely. That's, that's, been, that's been the problem for the past God knows how many years, hasn't it? Fifteen. Yeah, yeah, we, how long do we keep Eric Dyer? Ten and years. We can't ben Davies. Yeah. Ten years. Can't even loan him. We could barely, well, we will cover his entire wage book. Just take the fucker. And teams are like, nah, I'm good. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe is, uh, like, is, is Werner better than Manuel Solomon, which we haven't seen enough of yet. You know, if Manuel Solomon comes back from his latest twang or whatever, is he, is he better than him enough to justify? Is, it, is there a big enough difference between the two to say that Werner is a big upgrade? Because I think that's what we want. We want upgrades on players, not just, uh, yeah, he's all right. He's cheap. He's yeah. available. Spot on. Yeah. How much wages does Bernard demand for Spurs? That's another great little point to throw in there because if he's he's on 170 right now, so if he oh. wants in and around that, that is oh. absorbent amount for cheeky. Yeah, little <laughs> hey, hey, I'll take 170. Ooh, I'll stop cursing on my watch long for 170. Come on, that's a week, baby. 170 a week. Talk these, to they me they nicely. I never see these salaries and you think, fucking hell, five on five grand. Five grand. I mean, you can't go wrong. I'll give you I'll give you five minutes of shit. I mean, it's just yeah. bonkers, isn't it? Bonkers. Who's up? Wait, mm. who's our highest earner and in order? I know in Dumbelli, let's get him out of the question, but apart from Ndombele. What is the order of our earners? And does that justify Werner coming in at 170 grand? And if so, how many how many goals, not assists, I'm not concerned about assists anymore. Because everyone's like, we need an out and out winger for Angie's system. But I'm saying we can't just rely on the number nine to get the goals. I think the front three have to contribute to the actual goals, in my opinion. Or the whole team has to be, if I'm being totally honest, not just the front three, but if a man's taking 150, 170 bags, I'm expecting at least 10. So, See, by, not, based off what I'm seeing right now, let me share this tab and let me... Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. Oh, Paul, you're tiny. Hang on. Whee! Well, what if I do this? Hi, everyone! <laughs> Uh, what's oh, fuck? Which one looks better? Let me do this, and then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna adjust it. Um, based off of this, let me remove this comment. Oh wait, no, I know what to do. I just put you in this. No, damn it. Um, That's all right, little boo. Yeah, it looks all right, man. We'll work with that. There we go. Save that. Boom. There we go. Um, based off of this. Hyungman Son makes the most at 190 a week, and then mm -hmm. 170 a week for James Madison. Akuti Kuti Kuti got 165 a week. Um, Timo Werner is at 165. So Timo Werner is our fourth highest earner right now. Wow. Right is now, that, Timo is Werner is our fourth highest earner. Is it justifiable? Well, there's no, there was no transfer fee, was there? So that's what. That's what's going to happen. I mean, Pierre, when he goes, that's going to free up a bit, isn't it? Yeah, but would you want 165 going to vert? Like, I mean, no. Um, if he scored 20 25 goals, maybe. Yeah, because that's not far off Son, if I'm being honest. If Son's like five, no. well, well, not five, that's Son of Madison. He's 190, right? Son? 
Well, Son is at 190. James Madison, 170. 25 mil difference. 25. No, 35 mil difference. Mm, no, Actually, from, yeah. from Werner to Son is 25. It's a 25,000 di uh, difference. 25,000. Oh, that's yeah. nothing. <laughs> Just a 25,000 a difference a week. I'll take that difference, please. Uh, you can send that direct wire, Jacob Walraven, Cash App, Jacob Walraven, uh, PayPal, J Walraven, I believe. Uh, if anyone wants to send me that little difference there. There's over 200 people watching across all platforms. Make sure whatever platform you are watching on, hit the like, subscribe, follow, the tickle me, pickle oh. uh, button, whatever those buttons are. Paul, yeah, go Jacob, ahead. Jacob, Jacob, can you no, scroll down to uh, Papa Matasar? Yeah, that's a good Papa, one. Papa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This may not be the restructured one because he got signed to a new deal. This is, shows him at 10,000. Yeah, he got signed to a new oh. deal. Him and Udogi are not on. These aren't correct. So this is not. Right. Sar but and do we, do Udogi both got the, restructured. Do we know how much they are on now? Let's take a, I think it's 80. A I, think it? it's, I think it's 80 apiece. So 80 or 90 apiece. Would, would you take two Sars or one team over Erna? I know what two stars, please. Yeah. Two, two <laughs> stars. But That's remember the, the business, the business that we got them on. Uh, Harmless Potato says seventy k. So apparently got. But uh, I know it was a significant upgrade because he was making ten thousand a week, which is a criminal offense on Papa Matasar's name and his family. And quite frankly, um, just uh, that's disrespectful. Pay the motherfucker but, 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 the money but, but, he deserves. You know, that, was, that was also the situation last year, though, wasn't it? Where he, I think he only made two appearances. So, you know, you're not going to be really on the big... I mean, I'm not saying he wasn't a good player because I thought he was fantastic. I don't know why we didn't play him more, but that's... that's Sesson Young makes 55000 a week, by the way. Fuck Ryan Sesson Young. Yeah. He's been there since 2019. He's, he was on a six-year contract, wasn't he? Because his contract doesn't end until 2025. So we've yeah. still got another so year. Well, you still got Harry Winks in that list. Well, we still paying yeah, him, are yeah. we? <laughs> no, no, he's sold permanently. Tropical oh. Tree, yes, he is. He's in the studios now. Um, so based on this, Udogi's making 75 and Sar's making 70. So that puts them right here with Vicario, Frazier Forrester, um, Ben Davies, Giovanni Lo Celso, Maynard Solomon territory. Eve Basuma mm. makes 55 a week. Basuma makes as much as Sesson Young a week. That's crazy. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that crazy? Mickey Van der Ven's 50 grand. Yeah, Mickey That's Van a steal. That's, that's, that's going to get bumped up pretty quickly, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got a question for you all. He's on the phone, isn't he? Well, I'm, I'm looking at all these wages, and it's actually... Um, a little bit like, damn, I feel weird looking at other grown men's money, to be honest. Makes me feel weird. What is Romero? Romero is our third highest earner, rightfully so, 165000 a week, which is well, that's quite nice. But I have a quick question for y'all. Don't spend too much time on this. But, um, you know, there's this little bit of news. that Jordan Brand would like a third or fourth kit to be used in the Champions League next season. Now with West Ham's result today in Europe, that puts fifth place on mm -hmm. target to mm -hmm. be eligible for the Champions League next year. Now, apparently Jordan has suspended talks with Chelsea. The American brand are now closer to Tottenham. Currently, there is no vision to replace the home or away shirts, but they want to make a third kit for us. And... Um, I, I see Paul shaking his head. And I know, but he's just hard done by the by the logo on the shirt that he got this year. That the iridescent logo. He's pissed off with me about iridescent logos. But this is the first mock up from a fan. I want to get y'all's initial thoughts. For me, ooh wee, talk to me, baby. Um, I will be buying this off of the official site if this is what we come out with. An all black Jordan kit sounds nice to me. I would love, I can't wait to, for the training wear to come out, all the overpriced clothes that they're going to release. It's going to be fly as hell. We're going to look very, very nice, um, but at a very, very hefty price. Yeah. I'm going to start with Kuva because I feel like he couldn't give a fuck about this. Um, he probably <laughs> would say stick to the all white. 
thank you very much and call it yeah. a day yep. but kuva this all black swanky sexy motherfucker you don't want to get your hands on one of these is that is that confirmed thing or is that just like a, it is it is heavy work. rumors it's like we've been texting they've been texting i, I say just, hey how you doing i just don't think the sponsors are going to put up with the, the the their logo not being in red i, I really don't aia um, we'll see the thing is they're still going to have it on the home shirt so the home shirt is always going to that is the to my understanding that is the deal that they've worked out aia will always be in red on the home shirt but on the away in the third kits they're allowed to change so on our ways they change the sure. this year it's black in, in um, that case and, mate, uh, um in that case mate bring it on Let, let's go darth vader <laughs> oh yeah an all black kit and then you just got their names and numbers in white on the black or in like a light gray Ooh wee um i'm gonna save paul for last because i i feel like he's gonna have some kind of mic drop about this so ash what you thinking is this is this too good to be true jordan brand listen listen would... i for one will be in voxel market that's a market in in, in south i will not pay full price for this it's not in my price bracket i'll be real i've got responsibilities i'm a grown-ass man however yeah, you are I will be rocking the Jays. I've got black Jays. I've got Jays at home. They're all things. But yeah, I'm at the stage of my life where I'm happy to buy a little, I call it the Reebok. We call it the Reebok, not the real something, but it's like, yeah, a replica, something close to it. And and yeah, I will, I will, I will, I will happily uh, rock Jordan in all black, all black everything. Because once you go black, you never no? go back. Oh yeah. So yeah, baby. Jeez, I'm for it. Bring it on. And I think as well, the younger generation, maybe not so much yes. older, they're gonna lap it up. Do you know what I mean? Bro, they're, they're, the kids be... at, yeah, you just see this at, at an athletic store. You don't know what Tottenham is. Speaking of bro. like how big we are, we are fucking massive, bro. There's a guy in the NFL who just signed with the Cleveland Browns. Real quick, I'm just gonna before I get Paul's take on the so the Cleveland Browns, they, this guy, all last year, every time he'd get a sack, hit him with the Sonny. He'd hit him with the Sonny. Now, today they signed a guy who signed his contract in, in front of the press in a fucking Tottenham shirt. And this isn't the first one. This is one of many. Tottenham are fucking massive, bro. Listen, the amount of money, it's the kids, like the amount of money we'll make from it is, is going to be crazy. Everyone's going to want it. It's going to be a fashion piece. Yeah. Um, it's more Look money. PSG. People don't even like PSG. They just buy the fucking kits and the training wear because it's nice. There you go. Like non fans will buy it. Non fans, non Spurs fans will buy it. All black. Are you crazy? Like this, it's gonna be fashionable. Everyone's gonna want it with the hat as well. The J hat with the hoodie, the the, the full tracky, the drip. It's gonna be. Mm -mm, I'm telling you. So we're gonna. Are you gonna be drip dropping in this anytime soon? <laughs> they may. Yeah, you probably, I mean, if, if, if this if, comes if, out, if, you're going to go grab it. I think if Ash buys one from Vauxhall Markets, it's going to be like Jordan Anderson, isn't it? And just the two <laughs> faces on it. I, look, I was blissfully unaware that Jordan was a brand. So, I, no, I, I don't care. And you mentioned there quickly about uh, the fifth, um, fifth place in the Premier League um, qualifying for the Champions League. I, I'm not excited about that. I think it just makes a mockery of the European Cup that you've only got to finish in the top quarter of the Premier League um, to have a shot of being European champions. You know, I mean, I know, you know, Real Madrid's own Coover there, you know, it it, it, it it sort of pisses on their records, you know, the, the, the string of European Cups win, wins that they've had when, you know, any old Joe bloke can have a, have a crack at it. So, and that, you know, whether the Spurs finish in fifth, you know, and we lose out, I, I, just, I just don't like the way it's all being watered down. And that's for the mm. the kit, yeah, whatever. Fourth kit, it's just a it's just a money grab. You only need two, maybe three. I, I think my lack of enthusiasm for it is because for me, that's just a shirt. I was associated yeah, with, shirt with how we were playing football at the time, and right now we've had some beautiful not... shirts that we've performed very, very shitty in over the years. Yeah, I know that I can think of. It was like it, I'm kind of a hypocrite because my favourite shirt of all time. Um, reminds me of the 86-87 uh, season where we got close to doing the quadruple, but we won nothing. But the football was amazing. Glenn Hoddle, Chris Waddle, Clive Allen. Um, 
you're playing some brilliant stuff. Goff and uh, Mabba at the back, Ray Clements in goal. Um, it, it's great memories for me. At the moment, this shirt means nothing. I'll, I'll just, it, it's uh, it's just something that, you know, it looks awesome. You know, there's you know, a whole, like I said, Darth I, Vader, Batman vibe, that sort of thing. But it's cool. I, it's, I, I agree saying? with what you. What saying? Um, Spursy is the new black. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it's it. Better, well, it's better than the two month old spam colored one that we've got as our third kit at the moment. I was about to say that it's much better than that kit. Excuse think, me. It's much better than that kit. Show some respect. I have the goat's name is literally back there right now. Our third you're, kit. You're, you're, you're just encouraging them, aren't you? You'll buy any old any old tat with a cockerel on it, aren't you? Bro, the worst <laughs> shirt we've released in recent memory is the fucking scuba shirt. That one was ugly as hell, and people still bought it with the highlighter neck, like bow tie shit. What the it's fuck? Like, it's like four year old's pajamas, that, that kit, wasn't it? <laughs> Bro, it was a scuba shirt and nothing more. And we actually wore that on the pitch. It looked like a damn kid with three crayons designed that. Yeah. You know how they give you a picture and they're like, here's three colors at the fucking Denny's. And you're like, here, occupy the kid while we, you know, talk about the home being foreclosed or whatever. And it to me is just, um, this is ooh wee. That was oh no. And the more we get ooh wee, the more oh no. But with Kuva, I do agree in the sense that like, I attribute bad memories with beautiful shirts because we've had some bad memories and some beautiful shirts. And, you know, well, um, to me, like the, 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 the kits that stand out in my mind, like the, the same one with, with Coover, cause that was the first one I bought with my own money. Um, but the one, the, the Lecoq Sportif 81, one with the emblem in the middle, beautiful shirt. I also like the 91 shirt as well. So Funny, isn't it? I think you're right, Coover. When you win something, you like the shirt a bit more. Or when you play well, when you get excited. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. For I like me, when I, when I see the players wearing it is where I is where I turn. Because typically, I'll see the release, and I'm like, what the hell is this ugly piece of shit? And then they show the players in it, and I'm like, all right, I kind of want one. And my wife is always teasing me because she's like, let me guess, you hate the shirts when they come out, and then you're going to want one in two months because you see son playing in it and he's doing this yeah. and then it's just like bro i need that i need one of thems <laughs> i am i am a fat consumer cow and they know it and if they more they make this shit, the more i'm gonna say num 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 feed me more <laughs> num 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 because honestly i i can't help it like i just see it and i'm just like god i, I want that now i need that in my life because but darling, it's nearly 20 years till the kids have to go to college. I'll make it up. I'll make it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, she she will it will be limited to like one item, maybe two if I can get these to drop around my birthday or something. We'll find out. But look, I don't want to take too much time talking about these damn shirts that we're linked with. Um, some people are saying it's already a done deal, but I don't know if it is. Now, I did see this about an hour ago when we were kicking off the show, which we are an hour and a half in. So if you haven't liked the video yet, and there's over 200 of you here, um, you can get the dog to eat a steak, but you're probably not going to help the dog eat a steak. Let me, I haven't even checked how many likes we're on. Still says zero. Oh, 106. Very nice. Um, over 100 likes. You, you know what that means. Chewy will eat. Uh, the dog is not going to get it tonight. You know what I'm talking about? He's going to get it. <laughs> don't make me go old, old yeller on you all right i might hey mm -hmm. you know you've seen old yeller you might know what i'm talking about but oh, i did oh, see this I'll from alistair that, gold yeah. you've seen it yeah basically at the end he shoots the dog yeah uh, i'm sorry to old, spoiler old alert yeller makes me think of eric dyer's career <laughs> <laughs> right now he's got the rabies in bayern munich and they're like we can still love him uh just wait until he bites you just wait until he bites you and it'll be soon um but i got this here Al alistair gold tweeted apparently and then you know everyone's gonna pick up on it the syndicators etc the farmer for engagements says it's understood there's been a couple of little knocks and issues from the villa game and the photo obviously is van Deveen, but they said plural does anyone remember anyone else being kind of hurt at full time sar i think was her yeah Who? So the floor well yeah. what are we thinking here i mean obviously this is not very clear this is very vague and it's like 
someone asked him while they were pissing next to each other in the bathroom, hey, what, what's going on with those injuries? Yeah, there's been a few little knocks here and there. That's what the word is. All right, cool. Tweet it. Boom. Now everyone's talking about it. That's what I think this is. Um, so I'm not too concerned until Ange Postacoglu speaks inevitably to the media tomorrow. And I can't wait because like the fat cat consumer I am, I will lap that up too. Mommy, more milk, please. Um, whenever Ainge speaks to the media, I will be asking for more. So I'm going to ask, um, is anyone concerned about fucking injuries going into Saturday? Other than Vandeveen, of course. Always, I suppose. Um, somebody could go into the medical room with like a mild headache and they'll come out with two broken legs. They get the doctor treatment from the Spurs yeah, room, you know? Exactly. You got I a think, dodgy ligament, we, ligament, we'll whack that bit I, in sand. I think, I'll, I'll, I think I'll check chief medical officer, they wear a bloody apron and they got like a hat <laughs> store in their hand. <laughs> Dr. Harold Shipman at your service. <laughs> I've this naval rum. <laughs> What about guys? Uh, what, what about you, Doggy? Because he was the one that got the biggest challenge from um, uh, what, McGinn. what oh, yeah, Who? McGinn, your doggy, Destiny your doggy Adoshi. Got... Oh, yes, oh, Destiny Adoshi Day. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> happy Destiny Doggy year to everyone who observes. What were you saying about Destiny Doggy? Oh, yeah, no, nah, he got up and then he fell back down. So he was the only one I saw take a real large collision. So I but thought maybe... took a smack to the head. I think he got stepped on the back of his head, took a little yeah, right, stub think... to the head. Yeah, something got, right. some got a uh, punch or shoulder or something in the face, black eyes as well. Oh, yeah, no, he did. Not... He got elbowed. Fucking dirty ass villa, bro. I'm telling oh, you. Scum. Absolute scum. Oh, so I am. Um, I am. Um... I don't, I, I, a couple of knocks. That doesn't sound anything severe. Like even Van de Ven, like it was worrying while he was down. But the fact he, he seemed to walk off the pitch okay, that was all right. Um, and I think well, my first reaction when when Doggy went down from that challenge, because he got straight back up again, and then he went back down again. I wonder if he was just uh, thinking I got up too quick. I better get back down again. So I'm not too um, not too worried about him either. Yeah, I think everyone's going to be all right. I think so as well. If it, if it is someone, then it, it, Horo literally just came back from injury, but he seemed all right as well. I, I'm just throwing scenarios out there, but everyone else, Madison went down as well, but he looked all right as well. I don't know. You know what's crazy is, um, which big up Bobby K in the chat. I saw, I saw you sitting in the chat. How you doing, Bobby K? Um, Pedro Poro. There's been some talk about the best left back in the league being a guy named Ben Shite. You know, Arsenal film pretty high and mighty. They just beat Porto in the Champions League. And all the Ars all these Arsenal accounts, I'm not I, I do have it bookmarked, but I'm not gonna pull it up. They're saying Ben White's the best right back in the league. Just real quick, who's been the best right back in the league thus far? At least for Tottenham Hotspur, we know the answer for that. Um, and he's also played the most minutes this season for us as well, Pedro Porro. Um, I'm going to nominate Pedro Porro for being the best right back in the league, but I'm very, very biased in this sense because I just don't see uh, – Kyle Walker's looked suspect defensively. City has looked suspect defensively. Some would say we've been suspect defensively, and I would I would somewhat agree with that. But there's, is there there's any other no – there's no way Ben White could do what Pedro Porro does at all. There's very few players that can. So for me, yeah, of course I'm biased. I'm a Spurs fan. So yeah, Pedro Porro. The fuck would I even consider any alternative? <laughs> it's just not happening. Um, yeah. ben, White. ben White. Ben White's basically defensively a little bit more solid. I wouldn't even say... As a defender, I think as a defender, because he's played at centre back, so he's 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 naturally more of a um, a full back than he is a wing back. I think Porro is more of an attacking player on the ball. I'd say Porro's better. Um, so like, yeah, Porro could play in the midfield. Porro could probably play right wing. Whereas I think Ben White naturally 
he does do the overlapping runs, but his delivery of crossing, uh, that's not a standout attribute of him. He did turn down the um, England um, position. Apparently, he said he doesn't want to play for England, which I think is wild. Um, but yeah, I just think I just think. I mean, to be to be fair, as much as I love everyone dunking on this faking this, this this fake tan motherfucker with the veneers and the bleached hair, as much as I love everyone dunking on him, bro. If I'm a player, Southgate's like, "Hey, you want to come play with me? Fuck you! You're a bozo. You're a fraud. You have arguably one of the most talented squads in all of Europe, and you do fuck all. You couldn't even beat USA, bro. And we have Christian Pulisic, and that's." Uh, we start running out of names real quick after that. And he couldn't even cut it in the Premier League. But you look at the talent that Gareth Southgate has. As a player, I would be like, fuck off Gareth as well. Nah, Bro, Jordan man. Henderson made the squad. And he's been asked for Ajax. Uh, I, look, I'm, no, I, I'm, no, I'm no patriotist or whatever you, whatever the word is. or you know, I'm not big on nationalism or anything like that. But, you know, you, you, you talk to any footballer and they always say their proudest moments are playing for their country because that's the high that's the highest level you can get so <clears throat> i'm never keen on hearing players saying crap like i'm retiring from international football no no your your country retires you if, you, if you've got anything about you you know if if, if ben white saying he doesn't want to play for england i think he should be banned from professional football full stop fuck him off <laughs> in his career you know what? I, I mean, think the red. I won't say no. Fuck him. Why I agree. Fuck down? him. If you're a professional football. Why would you turn down the chance to play at the tippity top of most pop of most of, of the level? Unless you're because it's it's Gareth Southgate is a criminal. He plays a terrorist ball. Basically, that's what it is. No, Gareth, that. Gareth Southgate's an asshole. Yeah, of course he is. But it's still playing for the highest level. God, man. He, what, no, what, he. What, what, bloody, what bloody entitlement of this kid? Oh no. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to play. Free. Fuck you, fucking That's Arsenal it. prick. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree with everything you said. I, I, I was going to add on to it. I just think what it is, he knows he's not getting in the side over Kyle Walker and Trippier. Kyle Walker, treble winning uh, athlete with Man City, he won the, the, the Champions League, the, the league title, and the uh, um, FA Cup or the League Cup. Then you've got um like yeah trippy has been it's sensational for england so he just knows that position there he's not going to get a look in and he's thinking what's the point i might as well just denounce myself from now i think that's what it is and i think you, you hit the nail on the head ball do you know what i mean uh he just knows gosh in that position i think yeah. i think, with ben White, I think with ben White, he, he, he fills that hole arsenal need until they got somebody better he's not a great player he just does okay, um, and I think he's probably overperforming for for his ability at the moment. So he's having a good season by his standards. But I mean, they'd upgrade in a heartbeat as soon as somebody good, good comes up. Surely they would. Um, I think the, the the talk about best right backs at the moment. To start of the season, Kieran Trippier was in absolutely sensational. I think people yeah. forget just how he good he was in those opening few weeks. And then it's like, you know, exhaustion and his form went uh, at a dodgy period. But Kyle Walker is still top quality. It, it, sometimes he'll get beaten but by a player, but not very often. And most of the time, he reminds you of just why he's been so good for so long. When he'll do a recovery run and just make it look effortless, taking the ball off top quality players. Um, but for me, Trent, you've got you've to keep looking at Trent. He's just... As, as an all-round footballer, he's just absolutely amazing. Um, I, it, it's difficult. I think right at the moment, we haven't really got... aren't really seeing anybody that's consistently being very high level. Ex I don't argue except for Poro. I think he's been on it all season. I think it's justified now, people talking about him being one of the best in the league, if not the best at the moment. Form-wise, sure. I think... Um, you know, reputation and what they've done in the past. Trent is top of the pile for me, but uh, Trippier is going to be close as well. But I think. But don't you think? Don't you think they're using Trent more like a midfielder? I'm talking about England, by the way. And um, they're, they're they're looking at a yeah. different from as a, as opposed as a as a right back. Well, that's that's the beauty of Trent, though, isn't it? You play him either position. As long as you got him on that flank, you, you go, well, not even necessarily the 
the flank. He's good enough to play in the middle, isn't he? Um, yeah. it, he's just got an he's just got ability, bags of ability. He can pick out a sensational pass. He's got goals in him. Who wouldn't want him in their side? Yeah, yeah. Even even like someone said in the comments, Bradley. <laughs> Bradley might get it. <laughs> he looks good too. Yeah, Connor Bradley. Yeah, yeah he yeah, does yeah. look pretty good. I can't lie. Um, Heart desire, a bit of pace, and he knows how to cross a ball. Yeah, it's simple. It's got the ingredients, right? Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. agree. Um, I did have because I, I was trying to find the tweet, but a pretty big uh, Arsenal account, Arsenal content creator was the one that said oh there it is i found it i found it i found it but i found it so this guy i'm going to cover his name but you can see his handle there it says on current form ben white's the best right back in the league and i guess he prefaced it with on current form because that does make his argument a little bit better just because arsenal's form i suppose has been superb but i wanted to ask this question i, I saw this i started who is your Premier League signing of the season so far? The four nominees, Cole Palmer from going from City to Chelsea, Declan Rice, West Ham to Arsenal, Jaimis Madison, Leicester to Tottenham, and Mohamed Kudus. Don't even get me started on Mohamed Kudus, who I was bagging goals left and right in Europe today, by the way. I know I see you hanging your head in shame, Ash, because you were the one who told me, just get over it, Jacob. He's already signed. Just get over it. And I said, I'm not over it yet still not over it but um ash well ash i'll, I'll go to you last um mm. i'll start with paul because i know paul's answer paul do you? who's been your premier leagues i do, do know you? your answer oh yeah well well you'd be wrong you <laughs> be wrong. Uh -huh. who's your Did premier league signing of the season so far well i'm going for a player that's played every game i'm gonna go for vicario Ooh, i think i knew you I, that's what i, was, I knew it you fuck off! You didn't know that. I knew. You it. I, knew I should have. I should have typed it in the private chat. I should have typed it in the private chat. But I knew it. I knew it because to me, that's my Premier League signing of the season too, as well. And we just, Paul, we're in the same studio. Some say you are a time traveled version of me in the same studio, which I would hope the studio upgrades. Um, you know, what are you about show five, ten evidence. years older than me? Show me the evidence, Jacob. I'm on receipts. <laughs> show me the. Show me the evidence. I, I, I think I think just because he's played every game, and I, and I think he's look. We've uh, and this isn't dismissing Madison or or, or Van der Ven or anyone like that, but you know, having a having a, a, a keeper like that, just yeah, I mean, he's amazing. He's amazing the way you know the um, uh, you know the we're all in their half, and the ball's like five yards in our half, and who's sweeping up? It's bloody Vicario. I mean, I'm watching it with my mouth falling out. You know. And he's got the confidence to do that. And he allows us to play this up in their half half game. And then, I mean, that's not even talking about his shot stopping and stuff like that. I, I just think he's, uh, and if he's, even if you can take into account the price we paid for him as well. You know, I was one of the silly twats saying, oh, David Raya, David Raya. Um, but bloody hell, I think hell, we all were saying him. David Raya because we all wanted Yeah. yeah. No, I'd, I'd, I didn't I'd watch go. Empoli. I fucking... Didn't no. think about Empoli once last year, and I was watching Udinese. I mean, the thing is, Declan Rice being on that list. I mean, someone's having a laugh there, aren't they? They just go, "Oh, well, we've got to put someone from Arsenal, haven't we? We'll put, we'll put Declan in there, the traitor." Uh, Rich, member of the Ten Inch Club, says Rice. Bobby K says Rice. Unfortunately, there's a few people saying Rice. Kuva, are you saying Rice? Are you saying Vicario? Sicario, Vicario? Or are you saying it's, one of these names they mentioned? I, I don't think it's so straightforward with a lot of this because you've got to apply context to each uh, each of the signings. Um, I think Rice is unfortunately looking like he is going to take Arsenal to a next level. They're looking a much more balanced and competent team. Um, maybe not so much in the Champions League in the last two games, but it, it, league-wise, look, they... they struggled for a little bit to find how to score goals with Rice in the team. And then they overcame it and they started, being, started smashing them in. They look competent with him in the side. So he's done something for them that they needed. They've got control of games again. But for me, in contact... control these nuts. 
I'm, I'm looking at Chelsea and Cole Palmer. He has just been sensationally good in an absolute shit storm. That's a great um, shout. That, that, that He has been. And, and uh, Connor Gallagher's getting all, all these. Did you, did you hear what Sherwood I, I said? Cole Palmer, way ahead. Did you exactly. see what Sher, uh, Sherwood said? Ash, you know, you saw it? No, no, I didn't. It was after after they beat Newcastle 3 2. Uh, our old manager was like, you're a very quality player, but surely they've got to surround you with some more quality because everyone around, basically said everyone around you shit. And it's just you out there. And Cole Palmer's kind of like, uh, no, I think everybody's good. We're all good. Everybody kind of th- fucking just threw him in the deep end. But it was, uh, it was pretty funny. He's, he's not really a sort of pin up player, is he? For, <laughs> for if, you're, if you're trying to like sell your team. You don't want to have Cole Palmer on screen. <laughs> uh, Barry Shuttleworth says Arsenal could have saved seventy mil, signed Hoybier. I've on, I've honestly the beginning half of the season, I said he just looks like a spicy Hoybier, Declan Rice, and I called Hoybier a decaf Declan. Um, but this last half of the season, as unbiased as I can, um, Rice has been complete dog shit. No, he's, he's been all right, but that's about <laughs> as much as you can get from me. Um, I just think his price tag was way inflated. It's just like, bro, that's uh, he's now extra spicy hoy beer. He was a spicy hoy beer. Now he's extra spicy with a side of fries, maybe a drink to go or something. Um, but that's my thoughts. Uh, so you're saying Cole Palmer, Kuva? Is that where you landed? Yeah, for for me because they, okay. Chelsea have been an absolute shambles this season. But he's always stood out. He's just a quality little player. I wish we had signed him. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie says I mean, Palmer for him too. I think somebody said in the chat, I mean, they sold Mason Mount to United. Brilliant bit of business. Because um, <laughs> I didn't rate him at all. I thought they got massive fee for him compared. And bought in Cole Palmer with that money. That is a great upgrade. They sold Mason Mount and Hyverts for upwards of 120 mil for both of them out the door. Could you imagine if we got Davies and Dyer out for a hundred million, bro? I would, I would fly to, I would fly to London, and I would shake Daniel Levy's hand immediately if we were able to pull off a masterstroke of offloading Deadwood for a hundred and twenty plus mil. That's absolutely crazy. Um, well, we got we got James Madison for twenty million, wasn't it? Because we Hink, Winks went the other way for ten. We buy Madison for 30, 40. It's 30. We bought, wasn't it? So Madison was 45. No, he was 45. But okay. we sent Winks the other way for 10. So I like to say he was 35. 35. Because it's like you go, to a, you go to a discount store, you like, I'm going to trade some of my old shit in to discount the new shit that I'm going to buy. And that's what we did with Lester. I, I think, I think he, with Madison, if he hadn't had that horrible injury and he'd been playing like he was at the start of the season all the way up to this point. I wouldn't be yeah. looking at any of these other players. Yeah. No, that that is a that is a fantastic shout because honestly, if if Madison had been healthy, who knows where we would be right now? I, I like to do this. Imagine, imagine if, imagine if. Um, Ibu Time says McAllister, and I've heard a few people say McAllister for Liverpool for value as well. If we're talking bang for buck, he's been thrown into the number six role at Liverpool. He's done all right. He's been pretty good. And now um, that 35 mil for him doesn't look too bad. And I remember being like, that's a cheeky bit of business. He did have a release clause um, with Brighton. So that is a shout. I have heard people say McAllister as well. For me, I'm going to be boring and agree with Paul. I'm saying Vicario because I think 17 mil on a guy who's played every minute for us. And he got knocked in the head. He said, I don't give a fuck. This guy, he's been an absolute revelation. We were we were all concerned, right? We we just signed this guy. Oh, it's a cheap option. We're doing what we always do. Tottenham Hotspur, wham wham. Cue the wham wham. Oh, Tottenham Hotspur, we only spend very little. Wham wham. We missed out on David Raya. How dare we? We we wham, just wham. ended up with. How dare we? Wham wham. <laughs> I love that thing. I need to get me one of them, bro. Send me the link to that. I need to get me one of them so I can just wham, wham, whenever I want. Um, 
uh i just think vicaria for a guy who i've never fucking heard of to come in and completely make me forget about hugo Lloris and the fact that hugo Lloris, the goalkeeping thing was a problem for our club and the future of our goalkeeping was in in question to me he's been a revelation he's been critical and a lot he's kept us in games this is another thing oh, there's yeah, matches sure. where it's nil nil and he's fucking springing like a little cat to the opposite side boom save double triple save versus liverpool some shit like that bro getting shot and he's blah 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 just he is a one hell as a goalkeeper watching him i'm like this is what he's the keeper i wish i could have been right he's the kind of keeper quick reflexes uh, uh my life choices ended up my my reflexes aren't quite as cat like um <laughs> My life choices like Oreos and Chips Ahoy and shit also led to not so much spring in my step. But for me, it's I, I, Vicario. He's been, but I, I hear McAllister, also Endo. I think they got him for like 17 mil. Everyone was, was shitting on that guy too because they missed out on Caicedo and Lavia, which is a whole nother deal in itself completely. But yeah, for me, I'm saying Vicario, Sicario. Um, and 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 Paul, wasn't it just so sad we missed out on David Rea? Uh it was it was heartbreaking, you know, heartbreaking. Oh, oh, no, I was like, when, when. oh sorry. When, when. <laughs> <laughs> I missed my cue. Sorry, man. When, when. <laughs> when, 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 when. There you go. Um, uh, you know, when, when, that, when he took that smack on the back of the head, like in the replay, I mean, the guy's fearless. Like every part of that other player's body made contact with his head it was like his ankle his his knee his ass his yeah. shoulder his it was he was all over him and you know a little bit of i don't know magic vaseline on the back of the head or something and he's good to go again yeah i like it ash i don't think i got your signing of the season i think i was asking you i got distracted and then i told everyone my signing of the season how fucking rude of me ash <laughs> um i'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and avoid the obvious, the obvious one, and like Madison, I think Udegaard's been copying him. If I'm being honest, because Udegaard at the start of the season was struggling with Saka on that right hand side, and he never used to come and collect the ball. Now all of a sudden, he's collecting the ball from the midfield area like Madison. So I thought I'd put that out there. But I agree with you guys. If Madison hadn't had such a horrific injury. It would be easy, right? I think he would be the best 10 in the league, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, that stunted his growth in terms of what he's delivered for us. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go for kudos, because why not? Kudos for me, 43 million euros. Um, they sold Declan Rice for 105. So they, they got their money's worth. He's got six goals in the Prem, I believe. And three assists, that's nine goal contributions in the league so far. And then in the uh, Europa League, he's, I think he's got a further five goals as well. So all in all, he's got um, 11 goals plus the three. So that's another 14 goals in his first season. And I think had Moyes not stunk up the place with his defensive negative football and he'd been an attacking side, I think he'd score even more. West Ham for me, they could be a lot higher up if they played more front foot football. But uh, that's a different discussion for another day. And West Ham fans, I'm sure they'll be upset about that as well because they're, they're tired. We've been there with Conte. We've been there with Jose. So we we can relate. We know what it feels like. But um, if if he came to Spurs, if he was in a Spurs shirt, I think he would have been cooking. But I, uh, I, I'm putting that, I'm looking at the actual contribution he's done for West Ham um, in terms of output, in terms of goals. And assists. I think he's um, out of all those players, Palmer. He's taken a lot of penalties. You know what I mean? Not taking anything away from him. He's got five penalty um, goals. Um, but I, I do like Palmer. Technique wise, always wants it. Showing for the ball, you could just see he's a class above the rest. And I agree with Kuva. Everyone's jizzing over Gallagher when when Palmer's the true baller. Do you know what I mean? Um, Rice. To be fair, Rice, I know people say he's improved Arsenal, but they were second last season. I know they're top now. Unless Arsenal win the title, then has Rice really improved them? 
you know what I mean? Yes, they've gone further in the competition in Champions League and they've got to a last eight. But unless they do anything with Rice, has he really improved Arsenal? That's my argument right there. So what has, to be fair to Rice, if I'm not being too non-biased, what I think has happened since he's moved away from the six, which I think he was slightly struggling, I think he's looked better in that number eight position. He has come up with a few important goals for them. And I, I was shocked to buy that. I didn't think he had that in his locker and he, he seems to be getting that done. So I'll, I'll give them that. But apart from that, kudos. That's that's my context where I'm going for kudos. Value for oh, mine. I think you could also... Um, you could, oh, kudos. I was going to say, you could also shout about few, Mama Kudos because I love it. There's a few unsung sort of players that um, their impact at the clubs, it gets overlooked. When I'm thinking like Craig Dawson going to Wolves, for example. Exactly what they oh, mind you, that wasn't this season, was it? That was probably last end of last season, or was that yeah, it was last season? Yeah, ah, yeah, pity doesn't count then, does he? Um, but there was players like that. I'm trying to think, Brentford, um, oh, was the lad that went there, Nathan Collins, was it that sort of player? Yeah. It's, it's these kind of players that exactly what a club needs. They're not big name signings, they just do these solid jobs and make the difference between somebody struggling at the foot of the table to being safely mid table. They're every bit as important as these really big name signings for the clubs challenging at the top. So I think sometimes you you go they they don't get um the acknowledgement they deserve. I'd say West Ham as well. You've got to look at um uh, Ward Prowse. He's he's mm-hmm. been great for them. They, they, exactly what they needed. Bit of a combat combative uh, sort of midfielder who was able to pass from the back. Done really well for them. Um, signing of the season though, you couldn't. Yeah, perhaps not. Um, again, James Ward signing of but the yeah, it, it's these kind of things, it's it's horses for courses, otherwise, we just yeah. look at the very top teams and think, oh, unless they're going to cost 150 million and bang in 30 goals, they're not worth anything. That's just not true, is it? So, um, context is everything with each of them, yeah. Right. I agree, context is key in this sense. Um, I think, no, it's, it, it's fun though, at least you know, we can talk about the likes of Madison and Vicario, and I've seen some shouts in the comments for, for Van, Von der Ven, and, you know, whether they're the best or not, at least you can kind of argue the case, whereas last year I mean, you couldn't sit there and go, yeah, Clement Longley, signing of the season, you know, Jed Spence, woo, you know. So I think it's a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, big up. The wow wow emoji is available. I uploaded it while Ashmatic was giving me his last answer. So if you want to do like Paul, wah, wah. there you go. Wah, wah. You can get the wah, wah in your life. Um, the last question I want to ask before we end the show, and I'll go around the panel and get, get y'all to answer this question and then uh, give me your final thoughts before we end off. I did get the warning from the wife and the newly risen sun from his nap um question from bob down under big supporter of the channel here says question what has been the best game of the season from spurs this year for you um and then also if you have any little final thoughts i'll start with you ash ah best game of the season um that's a tough one there's so many that i've enjoyed watching um i really enjoyed the beginning of the season when we played Manchester United, before we knew they were this type of Manchester United, we didn't know at the time, well, I didn't know they were going to stink up the place. So for me, that was a massive victory. And I felt like that's when everyone was at their best, um, especially over a prolonged period, because we showed flashes of what Angebo is. Um, like against Aston Villa recently, um, the last game, we played a strong 45 minutes where we're like, wow, this is what we could be. This is what we need to be. I think we need to carry this kind of trajectory on. But in terms of like a, a full game, yes, Manchester United had chances and I expected that. They didn't take them. I, I do admit that. But it was a back and forth kind of game, which I liked. I thought, yeah, Man United, of course, they're not going to sit down. But the fact that we had the minerals and the bottle to put them away at our home ground, I was really impressed at the start of the season. And I was like, you know what? If we carry on with this type of balls, this type of mentality, this type of performance between Masuma, Madison, Son, um, even Saar, I thought them guys were running the show. I thought they were running the game. 
And I, I really enjoyed that Manchester United performance. That, but that was just me. That was just my preference. And and yeah. I didn't know who was better at the time. I didn't know if Basuma was better or if Madison was better. And that that's the type of football. I like all my midfielders to be ticking. Do you know what I mean? When I'm seeing uh, Basuma do a chorus turn in the box and, and mm. Cas Casemiro on his back like a bad beat, with his legs in the air, like... On all fours, so I, I just saw that type of football. It excited me, like players dropping shoulders, two touch, one touch. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I just thought it was a, a complete performance for me in my eyes. But um, yeah, probably not on a popular opinion. But yeah, here we go. No, I, I, I don't think it's going to be popular, but I see why you would pick that. Um, Kuva, what about you? What's your favorite performance from Spurs thus far? Uh, I think I'm probably going to have to go for the North London derby. Mm. I think we all we heard all the on the whole build up to it was how they're going to absolutely smash us. You play, you be... play like that at the Emirates, yeah. they're going to take you apart. Exactly. I yeah. was told that everywhere I went, four one, four one, five nil, four nil. That's what they are predicting. Um, and we, we turned up and gave them a hell of a game. They did have a period where they were better than us in the game. But then we did have a period as well where we're better than them. We gave them a proper game in their own backyard, and they knew they had to fight for that point. We could yeah. easily have won that as well. Um, so I think that was a big sort of eye-opener for them about how good we were at that point. Um, I like that. It, of course, it would have been absolutely brilliant if we'd won it, but um, I just like the sort of step, step in on their um, pride a little bit, and just showing, no, you aren't as good as you think you are. We like uh, yeah. we grew up a little bit in that game. Um, pity it didn't last because that, that was a good good period of the season. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was very it was very fun. I it do was. agree. Um, Paul, what about you? Favorite match of the season so far? Well, I probably made the same life choice as you, Jacob. So the old memory is not great. So I was going to say Aston Villa, <laughs> but um, I don't, but. I agree with Kuva. I, I I think that was the that was that was the game for me. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can beat the shitty teams, but when we go against the big boys at their ground, we can give as good as we get. And um, but I, you know, I do have a soft spot for the Chelsea game. I know I know we got thrashed, but I, I was just so proud of the team on, on that day. It just it just said it, it just said no matter what the circumstances, we're fucking Tottenham Hotspur. I don't know who the fuck you're going to be or what you're going to do, but we know what we're going to do all the time. So I, I, I like that game. I think that was a real, um, you know, um, uh, identity forming game, I reckon. And I think that's important. Yeah. I agree with you. I do think that's important as well. Bob Don Under comes in here and says, Chelsea, for me, don't think I've watched a replay of a loss so many times. Very interesting take there. Um, look, there's over 230 people here, 120 on Twitter. I don't know where these Twitter folks are coming from, but none of them say hello. None of them are following. None of them are retweeting. I'm convinced Elon's out here fucking running game. I'm convinced. All right. After a billion I'm... dollar firework went wrong again this morning, he's probably thinking, oh, how can I get my credibility back? Jacob from United Spurs of America, he's a man <laughs> to be back on track. He's the <laughs> one. Um, for me, my favorite game that I've seen thus far, and I know it's going to be kind of lame and boring, but was the most recent one. I thought we went out there and just kept well, spanking yes, somebody yeah. that we're in co direct competition for their spot. And this is one of those... Oh, everyone's like, oh, Wolves got six points on you, and Arteta's all this, and everybody's this, and Ange's naive, and yada, yada. And then what happens? Unai Emery, the one that everyone was getting the knee pads out for, he fucking changes Bold the it. way he changes. He Bold adapts it. his philosophy, got bent over the fucking kitchen counter, and got absolutely gaped. All right? We gaped him. I don't give a fuck when anyone says we gaped Aston Villa. They say, oh, the first 45 wasn't perfect. We were wearing them down. You know, there's a thing called foreplay when you make sweet love. And you don't just want to jump right into it, bending them over the kitchen counter. You want to lead up to it, foreplay it. 45 minutes of breaking them down, make them suffer. Making Matty Cash getting turned around, bodied by Brendan Johnson. I've never seen Brendan Johnson body anybody, but he bodied Matty Cash. Gives you a chance the first to 45. Back. Gives you a chance Every to moment check for that they... spells as well before you go for it. 
Yeah, exactly. So what am I getting myself into? Also, what I would say is Van Deveen and Romero shutting down Bailey and Ollie Watkins definitely took their momentum and steam out of that attack I heard so much about. Oh, Ollie Watkins is going to do all this and that. He didn't do shit but cry to the ref. So for me, it was Aston Villa because it was a domination. Because what I wanted to see versus Palace, I got to see versus um, Aston Villa. So for me... I'm, I'm taking that Villa match. Clean sheet. Vicario absolutely deserved the clean sheet. And the last thing I wanted to say about it as well, uh, we have special footage here from the newest queen on the block. All right. Um, the newest queen on the block. And that is Vicario's mother. Oh. Yeah, I love this woman. Let's get her thoughts. I'm a Vicario's mother, the goalkeeper's mother, and it was an amazing Mother's Day. I'm very happy for the clean sheet of my son. The man of the match uh, today is uh, son. I like son uh, very much. Me too. And I like your son ball. very much too as well. She knows ball. She absolutely is the newest queen on the block. Everyone shout out to mommy Vicario for birthing such a gem of a human i love it uh, i feel like yeah. vicario exemplifies all the yeah he's a big boy too so and, shout and out you, man and i'll tell you what she literally decided he was a keeper before anybody else <laughs> yeah oh i see what you did there that's a very good one i like that one kuva that one you know if you weren't paying attention whew, go right over your head but hey i'm too tall for that caught that one but look this has been a fantastic show we've gone over two hours on episode 170 i want to thank ash kuva and paul i've put the description god damn it i've put their channel links in the description of this video i have been bumbling since the beginning of the show i've been bumbling ever since and i'm gonna end the poll there with 186 votes and there, I, I guarantee there's not 186 likes what do you want to bet when i refresh let's see what it says 122 65 fucks hit a like or excuse me didn't hit a like but they participated in the poll you 65 i'm looking at you but the other 122 you beautiful bastards you've been making sweet love to the video and i like that and i appreciate that it's free so if you don't do it what the hell's your problem but also it's a free country and as paul says it's your free right to either not or do it either way you were here um so it still counts to help in the channel even if you didn't want to help the channel you fucking fraud um but i'm gonna end the poll there 186 votes and a resounding 74% says, of course, Sonny is world-class and he has been for some time. A measly 11% says, not quite there, but very close. And an even measly 10% says, it's a subjective word. But who cares? He's goaded. I actually like that one. And the measliest, measly number of them all. 3% says, no way. He's overrated. Cue the wah wah. And he wah, underperforms. Wah wah. wah. When, when is what I say, because he is world class and I don't give a damn. Um, I'm probably going to get a text from Alex box office and be like, I'm disappointed in you, Jacob, for not having me on to counter everyone's points. And <laughs> Alex, I can't wait till you join the channel next time. And I'm going to ask you this very question, even if we're not talking about it, because uh, I can't wait to see what he has to say about that. But as always, folks, um, let me say thank you to tonight's sponsors of the show. As always, you, every YouTube chat member um who's been you know re-upping on their membership you are absolutely killing it sponsoring the show panda ball with two super chats tonight and uh jess from J jsy talks football grabbing their lovers lane membership and phil coy's flexing that membership for two months appreciate the love to all of y'all and thank you so much for being tonight's sponsors as always um <laughs> yeah 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 when when that's what the fuck i'm on I love it, Paul. You get me hyped before we end this show. That's what I'm talking about. This is a fantastic panel. And, and to think an hour and a half before this show started, I was like, I don't know if I want to do a stream today. I don't even know if I'm going to do one. And what a fucking show it was. We had over 200 people for the majority of it, even if half of those are fucking Elon bots. Um, whatever. <laughs> He's trying to get me to buy Twitter blue. I know that's what's happening here. He's trying to do the, look at all the people watching on Twitter. Now you subscribe to Twitter blue thinking you get some ad rev and then you get fucked. That's what Elon's that's trying it. to do. I, I'm convinced. Do you, do you know the problem I had with the stream tonight, Jacob? Was that? Is if you, if you asked Ash something first, I'd probably have nothing left to say afterwards. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Big up. You know, the, 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 that Twitter blue thing is like when, you know, when you sign up for a dating site and you, you start getting all it. Oh, ooh, la, la, I'm getting all this interest. I'll pay. I'll pay. And then, and then you hang on, you just get fucking. Then all the 45 year old, yeah, all the 45 year old grown men in their mother's basement, they stop hitting you up. And all of a sudden you're like, where'd the ladies go? Where'd just they all go? The but. <laughs> the truck's speaking of where to go off. we are gonna go that's gonna do it for the show we'll be back tomorrow more than likely if not watch along this weekend for fulham we will be on adama watch officially um more of you know we're it's like hiking in the mountains and we don't want to see the bear but we kind of want to see the bear but not too close like from further away but if adama gets too close he will hit the game winner on us like he's done in the past I'm just saying it's not just us that he does it to, but we will be on a Dama watch. I kind of want to see the bear, but then I don't. That's kind of how I feel because I'm, I'm afraid of the bear. It's a very dangerous bear in a Dama Troy. but we're not here to talk about a Dama Troy. I'm here to say, do me a couple more favors. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, I don't know what will. So, um, you know what? I hope you have a great rest of your evening or morning, whatever time it may be for you, but do me a couple of favors. This is for you, not even for the channel. Stay blessed. I need you to stay fresh. I want you to up the lads. Count your fucking blessings. And come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs>